seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this you crazy mother. about to witness the strength of street knowledge. Hello there. Hello there. How is everybody doing today? Hopefully everybody had a wonderful week. Hopefully everybody's doing well. Uh, it is Friday. Hopefully you've, uh, if your week has been bad, I hope it's gotten better and it's going to get better. Uh, so here we are. Here we are. Uh, I was, damn dog here, I was on earlier this morning on my uh, patio perspectives, something new, different, you know how it is. Um, so yeah, thank you for everybody showing up tonight. I know some people may be a little behind, that's okay, it's okay if you're not here right now, just... If you spend time watching this, whether it's now live or later, thank you. Appreciate it. <clears throat> uh, now, Katie, if you see this, if you look to the upper right-hand corner, all right, right there in the right-hand corner, that is Check It Out Corner. That's that's where I have all the, the fine folks. I need to update it. Uh, I really need to update it. Um, a lot of... A lot of uh, 
uh, some of the little ID picks have changed. Um, I need to add a few. I just have I just didn't get a chance to do it, but I will get to it. I promise you that. So, also tomorrow night, don't forget Chad and Chub Z. Fans' point of view, six thirty Eastern, on the YouTube. Good stuff. Y'all go check them out. Also, Israel, from bottom of the map, if you didn't see my deal this morning or my comment, uh, excuse me, you can you can catch me at southcoastcane at gmail.com or you can d- DM me uh, at southcoastcane if you do the Twitter or whatever. Uh, reason why I say that is Israel had put a comment on my uh, what was that? The video I did, the, pa- the the patio perspective. When was that? Wednesday. Anyway, he had asked how to get in t- contact because uh, he was like, "Well, I think they want to let me come on the show as a guest host." Oh my gosh, that'd be so cool. That'd be so awesome. I love it when people ask me to or let me, you know, come on and be a part of their show. That's 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 very nice of them. Um. Also, this morning, if you didn't know, uh, Shad did put out a video this morning. Good stuff. Very good stuff. Uh, Come to find out that uh, Shad is on the uh, nighttime shift. You know, uh, apparently the wife is covering days. He's covering nights or whatever. You know, newborn. It's it's all good. So he did. He did put out a video this morning that he recorded earlier it's good stuff uh he refers to the uh his videos about the uh clean pockets um also like i said my my little sitting on the patio usually after work or in the morning drinking my coffee that will be the new patio perspectives even got a fancy small little intro for it's it's not as long as the one you just saw but you know the 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 sebastian street studio band wanted to to do a sound check so i figured okay it's cool it's cool it's cool uh (laughs) also real quick real quick before we before we get this party started i'm gonna get the link put up there in just one second be patient be patient the the big thing other than the the clean pocket situation is the other day our friends at Kane's Insight had a little video that uh Cuban my man Cuban uh put me on and this guy was actually the the title of the video was you know Cam Ward you know, the best since Ken Dorsey, you know. I'm like, you know, cool. To each their own. But I actually listened to it, and, and the dude had uh, this this guy on there that had done some extensive research. He went through the data and all kind of crazy stuff. And he only did his research back to Kaya which is around 2014. I think the other day I said 2015, but it was 2014 when Kaya took over. So with that being said, and I I don't want to rehash what I said in the video, but basically, you know, from Dorsey to Kaya, I mean, you had, you know, Berlin, Wright, Freeman, Marv, Harris, Morris, which I do like Morris too, Israel. He was a good guy. And my thing is, again, I'm not, I'm not on here ridiculing or insulting or saying that those guys were wrong. No, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that from my vantage point, you know, it, honestly, with the old one team with Dorsey, you could, you could interchange most of these cats and it'd probably be a different story. I don't know. I don't know. 
again, nothing against Cam Ward. This has nothing to do with Cam, uh, Cam Ward. No, nothing. Just take the personal aspect out of any of this. But if you just take those quarterbacks and just interchange them, you know, might be different. So, uh, tonight we will have a halftime for just a few minutes, uh, probably about the two-hour mark, which would be the 10 o'clock Eastern. Uh, so, just be prepared. You know, a little bathroom break or whatever. So, that's really all I have to say. So, I'm going to get this. See if I can see that. All right, cool. I am going to put the the invite in the chat. So, there it is. There it is. The invite is in the chat. Hey, take your time, Cuban. Take your time. I'm just getting started. First, thank you for being here, Cuban. As always, I enjoy your company. I don't know about other people, but I I enjoy it. Hey, look, if you can't get here on time, just get here when you can, baby. That's all. <laughs> no penalties. No penalties. No penalties. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get started on this 2008 episode five 2008 the young bulls okay uh the last time we came together the last time we held class i might have to give me one of those professor robes or something qb is always a pleasure sir always a pleasure yeah i think i'll give me one of those professor robes hey like my old school got my old school uh shirt of course it's it's an iron on made it myself well the the CEO of the company that, you know, sponsors this show made it for me. Has the pipe. That's right. Got to have the pipe. Anyway. All right. So look at just a quick, quick, quick recap of 2007. Of course, it was Shannon's first year. Okay. Uh, the team finished five and seven. Two and six Super Pauls. <laughs> uh, the, the, they, the Miami finished two and six in the ACC, which is fifth in the Coastal. Uh, I believe Duke was uh, winless. So, hey, it's cool. And again, it was it was the first year. Uh, it, it was it was pretty bad. So. Getting into the, we're going to have three segments. I've, I've decided to go three segments. We'll go through like the preseason. Uh, then we'll get into the actual games. And then we'll get into the the postseason. So, in the pre, so let's, let's, uh, before we get into the preseason, let's, let's kind of do a little bit more end of 2007. So, Kyle Wright, God bless the man. He did. He tried so hard. He really did. Uh, but to to, and the reason why I'm giving giving this this attention to Kyle Wright because you know he had all that attention coming in. So Kyle Wright finished his career in 2007. He he played. Uh, he was in 04, 05. Uh, he was there from 04 to 07. Okay. So his numbers, his career numbers at Miami. And these, I got these numbers off of sport-reference.com. Uh, these numbers were from ever since 19... What in the world is wrong with me? Uh, these uh, go back, the numbers, they went back to since 1956. Okay. So, Kyle Wright finished his career with 478 completions, which... At the time of 07, the end of 07, he was third all time on the on the on the quarterback list. Uh present day, now today. He, excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. He is uh, number seven all time on completions as of now. Uh he uh right finished the uh, his career with five thousand eight hundred and thirty-five yards. Which at the time of 07, that was six. Six. 
all time. Now he's Tith. Uh, he finished with 38 touchdowns, which was 7th after 07. Now he's uh, ranked 11th. <laughs> interceptions. This really shocked me because I knew the young man had some interceptions. I didn't realize it was this many. But he, Kyle Wright finished with 31 interceptions, which was fifth highest at 07. And the only people that were ahead of him were like, oh, uh, crap. It's, I mean, I'm talking guys from like the 50s and 60s, dude, maybe a 70s. I want to say Myra was in there, but don't quote me on it. But yeah, crap. What's up, my man? Hey, look, you know it's crazy here, but you ain't going to get kicked out. you always welcome here, Crip. Just like everybody else. You get front row seats like everybody else. Uh, so, yeah, Wright finished with 31 interceptions, which was fifth all time at 07. Now he's ranked sixth all time with the most interceptions. I'm not going to tell you who's number one, but we will be covering that young man in upcoming episodes. So he finished with the overall rating of 127.8. Uh, I don't know where that ranks because in the stats that I got off of sports-reference.com, uh, they even included like, you know, these guys who may have threw a, a halfback pass or, you know, come in on cleanup duty, had a cut. So they threw it all in there. So it was all out of whack. So that's, that's Kyle right now. Of course, these numbers include bowl games because they started doing the, they started including the bowl games back in, man, it must back in the nineties. I'm not sure. But so, yeah, this includes his bowl games. So, that takes care of that. So, a uh, couple of notes I wrote down. And these it's pretty crazy. That's why I kind of kind of get into this. Oh, of course, Crip. Everybody's excited. I mean, even though I don't want to get off subject, but I am going to address the, the chat. But, yeah, I mean, the thing about this, though, is... A lot of folks may think that uh, some of us are just, you know, Debbie Downers. We're uh, negative. You know, we're, we're a black cloud. We're never satisfied. We always find something wrong. No. And this is the main reason why. This is the main reason why that when I think. It was another one of Cuban's great ideas, and I just ran with it because I liked it. But to this kind of explains why a lot of us old timers, okay? Now, if you don't consider yourself an old timer, that's fine. But I consider myself an old timer, okay? You know, it's it's the stuff that we've been going through these these uh these episodes, the rise of the fall, that. Uh, kind of explains why we are the way we are now is because of all the stuff that we went through and experienced, which a lot of people did. But we're just trying to, you know, refresh memories, trying to give people some uh, little history lesson. Because like I said, it, it, these are, we're going to go through a lot of stats, a lot of numbers, a lot of data. There really isn't much, but it's just, it's a necessary evil. Oh, uh, Marv was, yes, Marv was a red shirt freshman in, in 08. Okay, so, uh, so talking about Kyle Wright, he ended up being a uh, unsigned, he was an unsigned free agent. He uh, signed with Minnesota like late April of 08, and then they moved him to, uh, to San Francisco in uh, early July of 08. And I do not, th I didn't see any stats on him being any, any NFL stuff. So Reese is the future. Well, we're going to find out. Uh, yeah, 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 Cuban Marv. Yeah, uh, we're going to find out, Crip. 
Uh, so real quick, uh, Kenny Phillips went to the Giants. Calais Campbell went to the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, yeah, Cuban. Marv Marv was a redshirt freshman. And uh, Jakari, Jakari, oh my gosh. Okay, that's strike one. Jakari Harris was a true freshman. And because of that, and I'm glad that, that led me right into what I was about to say. Very good, very good. So basically, from what I saw, the coaching staff basically told Kirby Freeman, who was going to be a saw senior, okay, that more than likely, you know, Freeman was going to be third QB3, okay, behind Marv and Harris. So Kirby took his talents to Baylor. He transferred to Baylor for the 08 season. So also now I put I also gave these there was a lot of other let's see one two three four five six seven eight there was like ten other cats that transferred out before the two eight two thousand eight season some of these names you may know but some of them you may not and I want to go through them because there's a reason for it okay so uh Chris Perry. He was a redshirt freshman defensive tackle. He went to Texas Tech. Uh, Dale Dajley on far. Hope I said that right. He went to Memphis. He was a junior tight end in 07. Uh, Darren Daly was a walk on walk on kicker. He went to UCF. He was a junior in 07. Uh, George Robinson. He was a redshirt freshman in 07. He was a wide receiver. He transferred out. Uh, I don't I don't know where these guys went to, but uh. This is the interesting part. You had George Timmons. He was a junior after 07, in 07. Jarrell uh, Mabry, Mabry, he was a sophomore. He was a, run, a fullback. Timmons was a running back. Charlie Jones. Charlie Jones. Does that name sound familiar, Crip? Cuban. Cuban. He, uh, he left after the 07 season. And then uh, Dimitri Stewart was a sophomore in 07, was a linebacker. Uh, Abdullah Luckwin Abdullah was a sophomore defensive tackle. And then, of course, Courtney Harris was out for the season due to uh, Achilles injury. So the reason why I went through all that is, you know, with the addition of Javaris James and then uh, Greg Cooper, kind of, you know, kind of made things a little tough in the running back room so I guess Charlie Jones said well I'm going to get on out of here I don't know so Crip when you say Brad are you talking about Kaya I'm hoping that's who you're talking about because I'm going to tell you right now I don't want to give any spoilers away but uh Marv, <laughs> Marv was interesting. It was interesting. But we'll get to that. <clears throat> we'll let the numbers, we'll let the numbers tell you. Okay, so the 2008 season was the first season Miami played in Dolphin Stadium. At that time, it was called Dolphin Stadium. I still think of it as Joe, uh, Joe Robbie, okay? Hard Rock now. You you have your own, but you know what I'm talking about, okay? That's back when they had the, uh, that's, that's back when the Marlins, the Dolphins, and now the Hurricanes played there because you still had the infield dirt there in 08. Uh, also, another another injury update, uh, a Javaris James was suffering with a high ankle sprain. He missed like, I think he missed like the first four games or so. All right, now, let's make sure, is there any other information I need to talk about before we get, okay, now let's see, we're going to get into the coaches. All right, this is where I start to use all my fancy stuff, so give me just one second here. 
Wah. How about that? Okay, so let me. We're gonna talk about the coaches, the coaches and staff first. All right. So there is the head coach, Randy Shannon, second year. Uh oh. I knew I was going to do that. I knew I was going to do that. Okay. OC was Pat Nix. <laughs> yeah. And then we had a new a new defensive coordinator, Bill Young. Uh, uh, Walton, uh, Tim Walton, he went to Memphis for 2008 as the defensive coordinator. At least that's the information I found. Uh Panunzio, he uh tight ends and special teams coordinator. Uh Clint Hurt was promoted to defensive line coach and uh recruiting coordinator. I know this is fun stuff, isn't it? Michael Barrow, he was still the linebackers coach. Aubrey Hill, his first season, he took over for uh Marquise Mosley. Uh, Marquise Mosley left. I really couldn't find anything on. Him. I think he went just kind of just kind of hung out. But uh, Aubrey took over. Speaking of taking over, <laughs> let's bring to the stage Cuban. How you doing, man? I'm good. I'm just listening in the background. That's fine. That's fine. I just wanted to go ahead and get you in here. Just 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 one thing with Crip. Yes. Uh oh. Uh, well, no, just Marv. I, I just. It's 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 not it's not a really a mark thing. It's every recruiting season, every quarterback we get is the savior. Then when the season's over, they're the worst, right? Right. Uh, right. Like Jeff, not Jeff Garcia. What's the quarterback? The Garcia kid. What was his first name? I forgot. Oh, the one that. Um, yeah, oh, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, have, if like, you hadn't asked, I could have told you what his name was. Yeah. Anyway, but, it, but Garcia. Yeah. Yeah, Garcia is like every year. It's like this. Right. Example, Cam Ward, right? We're saying Cam Ward is the greatest thing in the, in the face of the earth, right? Well, we were saying that TVD was an NFL quarterback. Uh, Eisman. Oh, yeah, Jake Garcia. Yeah. Good job, QB. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, QB. <laughs> so it's like, you know, every offseason, uh, TVD is a Heisman candidate, right? Top 10 quarterback, so on and so forth. Right. And it's like every season we always claim that these quarterback are the greatest. But mm -hmm. it's like mm -hmm. un until because yep. I remember the Marv hype. Marv was, Marv was. I think he was um, a Florida Player of the he, Year. He was. He was Mr. Florida Football. Mr. Florida. Out, yeah, he was uh, Mr. Florida. Yeah. I mean, we're gonna work out. I, I, I may be wrong, but I want to say he came from Plant High yeah, School Tampa Plant, in, Tampa Plant. in Tampa. Yeah, yeah, Tampa Plant. Yeah, we're gonna so, get to that in a second. Yeah. So you know, I just. I, I, I you know, respect Crip. It's just the after scenes before. We, you know, like, oh, this is the greatest quarterback in the face of the We're comparing him to Drew, Drew Brees. That's what people forget. That's what he wears number nine. All right. So let's the, the, I, the, 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 the love for this particular show is we look at things before and after. Right. So if you look in that before, Kane's fans forgot that we thought Robert Marv was Drew Brees. So. That's oh, all. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. Good. Good point. Good point. Appreciate that. Back and, and it's like and it's like I said earlier, this kind of explains why a lot of us. Fan Canes fans that's been around for longer than some of us want to admit, but that's why we really don't you know, we don't really buy into the hype that much because, you know, again, you know, Brock Berlin. OK, Kirby Freeman. Um, now, you know, Kyle Wright, you know, and then now Robert Marv. And again, I'm not, I, I'm not giving any opinions. I'm not basing anything on opinions. I'm going to, we're going to go through all the numbers. We're going to look at the season in totals and, you know, all I can do is provide the information, but you do what you want as far as dictating the, the the numbers and, and no i'm not going to spoil it i'm going to stay positive this is randy shannon's second year we're going to have things happen <laughs> yeah uh 
and, and that's that's going to be in a future episode, Crip. I don't want to give any spoilers away, but. <laughs> Okay, so so Aubrey Hill came in first year as the wide receivers coach. Like I said, Mo, Marquise Mosley left. Couldn't find any information exactly where he went. Uh, I think he did some stint in the NFL as an assistant, like a, a positions coach. The last, I think, the last thing I saw was he was at. Uh, University of Texas, San Antonio. But please don't quote me on it. That's not really important. Uh, crime dog McGriff. I just say that. Wesley McGriff was still the uh, defensive backs coach. Uh, Tommy Robinson, running backs coach. Stout one was the wow. offensive line coach. If you go back from the beginning, a lot of these guys are like premier coaches or NFL coaches because – Mm-hmm. Look, Stephen Fields. Wow, this this was a great rec- coaching staff. Now, 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 just just to give context. Oh, and in case y'all, if y'all want to follow along, this is just the 08 media guide I found at collegepressbox.com. But that's of no consequence. So yeah, uh, Don's boy Dan. He was a grad assistant, and of course, Stephen Field was a grad assistant. Looks like he took that picture outside the club, but we're going to digress. Oh, look, look at the precious young lady, precious young lady. I like that. That's what it's about right there. Okay, so let's get to the basic reason for the title. Could could you go back to the beginning of the coaching staff? I just want to see after Randy Shannon. Oh, okay. Yeah. Really, everybody stayed the same except for, uh, so, yeah, of course, Patrick. Yeah. yeah, so Patrick Nix didn't do anything. Bill Young, Bill went Young, to Oklahoma came State, in. and did good at Oklahoma State. Then retired after after Miami. I'm just speaking like after. What's next? Oh, okay. Yeah, because yeah. I, I yeah, uh, and of course he took over for Walt. Walt yeah. went to Memphis. Walt. Uh but yeah, Bill Young was pretty good. Yeah, he was good then. Let me see. Panunzio. Of still, Panunzio. He went, still he went to Alabama, and he was the right. uh, bag man for everybody. Not, it's not recorded, right? Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait no, a minute. Sorry, no, I didn't say, I didn't no, say that. I thought no, it was no, on no, me. No. I mean, this I mean, this went in front of Congress, dude. How can how, I mean, how could they compete with this NIL? Yeah, so this is the bag man. He, this is the bag man for Alabama. I'm not – oh, I, I said that out loud again. I'm sorry. All Don't I'm ask me say, how I know. All I'm going to say on that is if, and I'm not picking on anybody, but you can't tell me that there wasn't any money exchange between schools, boosters, whatever, and, and players. But I digress. Let's let's see. You got Clint Hurt. He was Clint promoted Hurt. to defensive line. Well, and he was defensive coordinator for the Seahawks, NFL guy. Right. Michael, Michael Barrow, Barrow went to the NFL. You know, actually, this is one of the I, – I, and y'all can call me on this, okay? Call me out on this. But Barrow was one of the, the few players, returning players as a coach, that actually did pretty good, you know, because our, our track record with, you know, people coming back home as coaches, it's, you know – we're going to leave it at that. Then, of course, you know, Aubrey Hill, he took over for uh, for Mosley. Excuse me. Sorry. No, that's okay. I just wanted to make sure. I just like. I thought maybe you just didn't like Aubrey Hill for a second. There. No. No, no. no. <laughs> Rest in peace, Aubrey Hill. Ah, uh, yes, you're right. And McGriff, then, of course, uh, McGriff. One of the top DB coaches in the nation yep, now. Yep, yep, yep. Wow. And then Robinson. He did it. I think he's uh he's one of the top running back coaches of the nation as well. Wow, this is crazy. Yep. It is, isn't it? It is. And of course, Stoutland. The top offensive line yep. <laughs> uh, coach in the NFL. That's right. Wow. This is ridiculous. It is. Then I think it's just the grad assistance that gets us back to uh okay. Danny Boy and uh okay, then we got uh Swayze was still the the strength and conditioning coach. And I believe, I believe that was it because then it just goes into the other directors and all that stuff. So that 
is the coaching group. Very, very talented group. Oops. So now, the signees. Okay. So let, let me ask you, before we start the season. Okay. So, we, ain't, we ain't there yet, but go ahead. Yeah. So, okay. So, Jorn with the with the coaching staff, right? And, well, now with the signees. What was your prediction for this season? Okay. I'm going to be honest with you. You know, of course, it started with the number one recruiting class, which is what we're about to cover. You know, Miami got the, the number one recruiting class. Uh, you know, the season before, you know, 07 was a dumpster fire. Okay. They ended the season on a four game losing streak. Uh, but you got Mr. 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 Florida football, you know, Marv coming in. And you got these these young men coming from uh, Northwestern. You know, the young Bulls. They won all these these state championships. I think in 07, correct me if I'm wrong, Cuban or anybody yep. else. Yeah, you're right. They had won, they were alleged I say allegedly, but they were kind of considered the, the the national high school football champion in some publications I read. Uh but what I'm getting at is those cats were they were good coming out of high school. They were good. And then, you know, uh you see you see his name down here, you know, Arthur Brown. Okay. He was like, if I'm not mistaken, he was the number one number linebacker one yeah. coming out. Yeah. Wow. So looking at this class, this is a yeah. ridiculous class. And you know, in 08, there were well, there may have been, but you know, you didn't have you didn't have the social media uh the ease of social media like you do today. In other words, you didn't have the Twitter. I mean, you had like the little Facebook and all that stuff, but things were still kind of message boards, but you didn't have anything like a, like what you have today. You see what I'm getting at? Oh, uh, so, so yeah, it, it was, I'm thinking, all right. Cause you know, you got to realize we're, we're only six years removed from the the O2 undefeated season. You know, 7 years removed from the O1 team. You know, so it's not like you know, it's you know, 20 years later. We're not that far removed. And honestly, to finish up my answer to your question, Cuban, I really thought that this O8 team was going to be the next Next team, I did. Just looking at, I just remember this class like it was yesterday. I know. Wow. God, we're good. We're good. Okay, so don't put me in your group. You're old, not me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we'll look at the names here on the left. I mean, you got Travis Benjamin, Arthur Brown, Raymond. Or Ramon, did I say I raise it? Raymond or Ramon? No, it's Raymond. Uh, no, it's Raymond. Ramon. Yeah, no, it's Ramon. Yeah, Ramon. he corrected okay. Ramon. Buchanan. Buchanan, yeah. Uh, Laron Bird. Uh, Calhoun. Daron oh, Collier. Taylor Cook, which was. Marcus He Forrest. was supposed to be a pretty good. But uh, then Fudge Harden. Uh, Harper Harris. Jacory Harris. That was supposed to be the next, you know, after Ar Marv left. Yeah, that was um, going to be the next great Antonio one. Antonio Harper was a dumping linebacker too. Yeah. Oh. Uh, CJ Holton, Aldarius Johnson, Devon Johnson. Oh. Uh, and I would have I would have pulled up that Rivals thing, but they were only showing four stars and and they only had them ranked at like a number 4 class. So I just said screw them. We'll just look at the names. Oh. Uh, Zach Kane. I remember Zach Kane was a big, yes. big white boy. Yes. From he Tom was. Rivers, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. This he was uh he was. And then uh let's see, Lewis, Marty, Marty, Odom. Oh, the Thumper as a safety Yep. Marie. Then Regis, yes. Marcus Robinson, Robinson was Andrew, a Regis Andrew Smith, safety. Cannon Smith. Uh and then of course Sean Spence. Give me uh, this class today. Wow. This is a deep Streeter. Talamac, Tompkins, 
Brandon Washington, White Claw, Wiley. Now, uh, it looks like Cannon and Sean, they enrolled in the spring of 08. And then, where is that junior college dude? Pat Hill. He was a uh, junior college transfer. Yeah. That's it. So, I mean, dude, this is it was it was a good class it really was on paper you know uh and then of course you know they go through and they kind of give all the you know players pictures et cetera et cetera so with that being said i am going to switch and we are going to go and do 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 bam the schedule so here's our schedule. Oh, let me get my name out the way right. Well, hang on. Y'all just bear with me for it. Y'all know who I am. You know who Cuban is. All right. So basically what we got is, uh, as you can see, at the time the schedule was out, Florida was the only ranked team at the could time. We, could we do the preseason win or loss? You know how we do the – we must win 10 games this year. Could we do the, the, pre, oh, well, the preseason um, win or losses here? <laughs> oh, I mean, we can. Uh, I can tell you right now, like I said, this – of course, the rankings that are on here were preseason at the start of the week. So, this isn't final rankings or anything like that. So, uh you know, looking at the schedule, y'all you had was number five, Florida. Yeah, Florida, Florida and State, Virginia Tech, and Texas A&M. That, those are the only four possible if possible losses I would have seen. Oh, yeah. I mean, because back then, you know, Florida State was on the rise. North Carolina was in year two of uh, Butch Davis. Butch. You know, A&M was still pretty decent. Okay. Uh, and, of course, Virginia Tech. Uh, and, and really, that would have been, you know, the Florida A&M, just because it was a college station, the North Carolina, Florida State, and then Virginia Tech would have been the only games I would have been concerned about. You know. Yeah, yeah. But, but <laughs> – That wasn't the case. So, I'm going to go ahead and take that off the screen. And we are about to go ahead and get started with the games. And I'm telling you right now, I'm telling you right now, it's, it's going to be fun. I don't want to give away any secrets. Ah, uh, let's see here. Make sure I got my notes and everything ready here. Okay. Now I will tell you this. I did, I did watch bits and pieces of some of these games, um, uh, because some of the the condensed games hadn't been out yet. But a lot of the games, I didn't sit there and watch the whole thing. I'm not gonna sit there and watch 13 games. You know, call me what you want, but I got I got the the gist of it. Okay, okay. So now, let me. Well, we lived it, so that's a little bit different. It is, but again, I mean, you know, I I just can't see myself sitting there watching thirteen games at three hours of pop. And I'm gonna tell you right now, it really wasn't worth watching. But we're gonna get into it. All right, so here we go. First game of the season. Your Miami Hurricanes coming off a four-game losing streak took on Charleston Southern. And as predicted, Miami wins 52 to 7. You know, there was no doubt. First game at the uh at the Dolphin Stadium. I, I want to call it Hard Rock, but I gotta stay in character. Dolphin Stadium. Joe Robbie. I can't, I can't say Joe Robbie. Gotta stay in, gotta, gotta stay in, in character here. I'll probably just you know what I'm saying. Ah, uh, and the crazy thing is this was on a Thursday. Thursday night. So as you can see, it was everybody had a had fun with it. Uh actually the thing that really 
that caught my interest was Ja'Cory Harris started that game. You know, which probably wasn't a bad thing. I don't know. But I just thought that was pretty interesting. Even though Cannon Smith got a little time in there. Uh, as far as rushing goes, everybody had a hand in it. Everybody had a hand in it. Uh, I see Javaris played that game, but he did sit out four games. I don't remember where it started. But, uh, of course, receiving, you know, not gaudy numbers, but it's well spread out. Okay. Go to the passing again. I'm sorry. Uh, see, Jakari. Oh, that's right. Marv was suspended. He was. I didn't know that. Yeah, he I was thought suspended. they let. Okay, refresh, uh, refresh the class and myself while he was suspended because I must have missed that. Um, it was some off-season stuff. I don't. I don't think you remember him. His dad and Coach Shannon were beefing at the time, so he suspended him for like some disciplinary stuff. Or no, no, I'm oh, sorry. Okay. No, it was he was when he was in Tampa Plant, he was arrested for drinking. So when he came to Miami, oh, he was okay. uh, suspended for one game. Ah, okay. All right. I'm okay. not old. So, I'm not that old. Sorry. Well, again, I you know, I'm having to go back and and find stuff and you know, little tidbits like that I'm not really, you know, privileged to, but uh all right, so that, I mean, it's, it's Charleston Southern. I mean, what what are you going to say, you know? I'm shocked they gave up a touchdown, but it is what it is. All right. The next game, your Miami Hurricanes take on number five, Florida. This game here. And this was <sighs> crazy. It was crazy. It was at the swamp. Now, the thing about it with, this with the, the Florida. This is the national championship, uh, Florida Gators, right? I be, You know, I believe it was. Yeah. I really was. And see, no. the thing is. Urban Meyer. Uh, this, this victory that Florida got, which, I mean, they were only up nine to three going into the fourth quarter. Okay. Yep. And the only the reason. Yep. And if, if I remember, if I, my notes are correct, the only reason why they scored that seven points because I think Boshier shanked a punt for like 14 yards and then the two points came off a safety from a block punt. So, you know, but Miami yeah, we did have gave a field them, we goal. we gave them those points. Yeah. So, basically, uh, with, with Florida winning, it ended a six-game losing streak that went back to 1985. So, now you're missing. You're skipping a lot of things here, Jordan. You, I don't think you remember. So this game, at the end of the third quarter, Miami got was real hyped. Um, Urban Meyer was shaking his boots on the sideline. Like, oh, I what haven't... the hell we were playing against? Like, you know, this oh, was yeah, a we're... Robert Marv team, and I think. What ha I think I don't know if uh, don't don't scroll down because I'm just trying to re remember. I don't know if Randy Shannon put Jacory Harris in the game, and I'm like, if he did, it was in the fourth quarter. I was like, why are you doing this? Uh, Marv was playing a good game, you know. Spence, oh, this is the game that Spence ragdoll a true freshman out of high school threw Tim Tebow on the floor. Remember when he grabbed him by his jersey and just threw him around? Yeah. And I think the, the I think they gave him yeah. a penalty for that. Yeah. And, it, and that, and that was like, and that that was in the third quarter, I think. And I was like, "Oh, we're in trouble here. They're not going to help us out." But what happened that game was just older players beat up on younger players. Right. So well, I was no, 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 no. You're okay. I was just, you know, we're going to get into the stats and stuff, but I just, you know, so yeah. Uh, looking at the scoring summary, of course, everybody remembers Mr. Hernandez. Uh but, yeah, Bosher had that 50-yard field goal. That was really it for Miami. But the beauty of it is Miami held them. You know, it, it was 9-3 going into the fourth quarter, and then it just, you know, if I ain't mistaken, they had a an 86-yard touchdown drive and then a 95. Florida did 95-yard drive. So, it just – I really – think it was just like you said. I mean, they probably just ran out of gas. Uh, looking at the stats, though, the uh, the rushing yards, 
you know, Miami had 61, Florida only had 89. And then even the passing yards with, with Mr. Tebow, uh, they only got 256 yards, but he did have two interceptions. So looking at the uh, – Oh, I didn't give me the third down ratio. Oh, well, it'll be all right. So yeah, yeah look at yeah, this game. I, I this game, I think Randy Shannon screwed. Miami could have won it, but then he put Ja'Cory Harris in. And he put Ja'Cory. Oh man, I remember this game like it was yesterday. He put Ja'Cory Harris in when uh, Florida kicked the ball to us and we got the ball like on the two yard line. And he mm. put Ja'Cory. I'm like, why are you gonna put a true freshman quarterback? At a screaming Gainesville in the opposing, uh, you know, in, in the fan right. section, and right. it's like, what are we doing here? And you could, right. and I'm like, right. Shannon, this is like, oh man, we're in trouble here with Shannon. Shannon oh, yeah. was yeah. so nervous. I'm like, what are you doing? Let, or I'm not, not saying Robert Marr was doing great, but he was, he kept us in the game. It was what nine three. Like let let the game roll. Right. Uh, right. Right. Jordan, I hate you. Right. Now I'm getting mad at like this game was yesterday. Oh, I okay. This look, game like I, it was yesterday. Dude, I hate look, this channel. I hate this show. I'm out of here, look, Jordan. I'm look, pissed. We, when we started this journey, when we started this thing, we knew what we were getting into. No, not like and that. And I'm going to tell you right now, I, I know you're just saying that stuff, but it's, it's, it's going to get even more interesting as we get through the season. Yeah, but you know, this is Florida, yeah. right? This is a yeah. rival, and this was like right. the mighty Urban mm. Meyer, Tim right. Tebow, right. right? And it's like we were the complete underdogs, and it was nine to three yes. in the yes. effing third quarter, right? And it's like we had a the defense was playing here, you know, yep. lights out, and then yep. Shannon does a dumb yep. thing and putting in. That's why I that's why we're Crip, Crip was saying that it was a you know. He was, you know, uh, Marv was bad. I'm like, Marv was not that bad. It's just Randy Shannon really screwed the pooch up with this right. whole right. quarterback system. And like, oh, you know, right. QB yeah. said the, you know, Randy's QB handling was questionable. Yes, it was horrible. It was. But, uh, it was. So uh, I'm just I mean, getting you, angry like it's back to 2008. Just hang on now. I had more hair that. back then. I was skinnier. I had more girls. X, Y, and Z. <laughs> Sorry. Too much. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. That's what this is all about. Anyway, so, I mean, yeah, look, like you said, with Marv, he was 10 of 18, no interceptions. Uh, he only had 69 yards, but considering, uh, and then, yeah, Jacari got it. Jacari got in there. I don't know why I keep saying Jacari. I'm going to call him Mr. Harris. I don't know what my problem is. Uh, he was two or four. Uh, Tebow, you know, nothing really gaudy. Wait a minute, I said it. I thought he – I read the stats wrong. He had two touchdowns, not two interceptions. I'm sorry. I read the stat wrong. Uh, as far as rushing goes, um, it was, you know, Cooper had 31. Daron Thomas had 22. I think – did is this the game that, that James re injured He got that high ankle sprain or he messed his foot up or something? Um, I think game? it was shoulder. It was a shoulder. Shoulder, first. shoulder. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, I mean, because they had uh, well, that team had Brandon Spikes. Yeah, um, yeah, it um, was major right. Um, they, right, that team right. was deep. That was a deep. That was a deep. I hate calling. I hate saying this for Florida. I don't like saying. But that. the thing is, you know, with the way this young team played against them, you know, the defense anyway, Miami's defense. You know, they held them to that. Frustrated them. You know, uh, again, not much, not much on the receiving, but I do like how the ball was spread out. And, of course, looking at Florida's numbers, Tebow was the leading rusher. Surprise. Harvin got a little bit. But, I mean, even their numbers, you know, except for Hernandez, you know, and Murphy, they really, you know, it was kind of spread out too. Uh, let's see. So for Miami, let's see, Cook, Sharpton, NFL, Spence NFL, had two NFL, sacks. NFL, skip, uh, NFL. Chavez, Chavez had a sack. Uh, it looks like Bruce Johnson had half a sack with Stephen Wesley. 
Uh, Randy Phillips had one. Alan Bailey had one. So, I mean, that's what? One, two, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's eight sacks, dude. Yeah. That's, that's, that's impressive. That's yeah. impressive. For, 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 you know, consider. Oh. Brandon Spikes. Yeah. Ahmad Black. One, three. They only had three sacks. You know, so consider, I mean, yeah, that was, you know, that was that 08 Florida team. And, and, and you hate to admit it, but that was, that was a damn good team. I mean, they won the, the national championship. So, but, you know, it is what it is. And that, and, and you know, honestly, getting back to your question you asked earlier about what I felt about the team, you know, with all those young recruits coming in, and I'm going to be honest with you, when, 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 when it came to this game here, I'm like, man, we're going to get blown the hell out. You know? Yeah, it was, a, them, it was a, it was a but, freshman team, a true freshman team. Not even – it was a young team. But but going into halftime, nine to three, I'm like, man, going into the fourth quarter, not going halftime. Exactly. But well, I'm just I'm, I'm, I'm built I'm, I'm building <laughs> yeah. the story here. You know, halftime. I'm like, man, nine to three. Wow. And then you know, third quarter, still nine to three, going into the fourth. I'm like, damn. All we need is a touchdown. Yeah, all we need is a touchdown. It, this 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 is. I mean, I'm starting to get that feeling. You know. That yeah, feeling that everybody has right now about Cam Ward and Mario and no, no, you know, no, not really. But but I have know. not had the only time I had this feeling about this <laughs> roster was a Texas A and M game, and that's it. Yeah, but I'm just saying. Back then, I was like, okay, but then, you know, it. Then the season. You know, the 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 the, the, the big mighty Gators took over. All right, so let's get to the next game which is going to be the A&M game. Now, this game here was impressive to me. This is the Greg Cooper game. This this was an impressive game because I thought for sure that, you know, because, you know, last the year uh, in 07, Miami, you know, took them to the woodshed at, my, at, 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 uh, at the, the Orange, Orange Bowl. Bowl. Yep. And, and A&M was ranked. Oh, shoot, I don't remember what they were ranked. Let's see if I still got it here. Yeah, A and M was number sixteen last year when they beat them at home. Oh, beat wow. them like thirty four seventeen. I mean, they just put that whooping on. I'm like, oh yeah, going to Kyle. Oh yeah, it's going to be bad. But nah, you know, uh, talking about the the numbers, you know. Cooper had – he had a career-high 128 yards, which, I mean, he just started, but still, you know. Um, you know, yeah, A&M had that 62-yard pass to start it off, but then Cooper had that 19-yard run. Then he pulled off that 51-yard run. Uh, Collier had that 26-yard pass. Y'all, y'all see the numbers. Y'all see the numbers. Uh, looking at the, the stats – you know, uh, Marv did have an interception, but he was 16 of 22 for 212 yards. Yep. So, you know, hey, here we go. And looking at the rushing, you know, 159 yards rushing, A&M only had 87. They both had, you know, Miami had one less first down, but still, you know, total yards – uh, A&M had some passing yards, but they had the interception. But total yards, you know, Miami had just a click under 400. A&M had 362. So, I mean, they they they, 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 they took care of it. I couldn't believe A&M had more penalty yards than Miami. Uh, so, Harris did get a little time. He was 4-7. And, uh, oh, Jared Johnson did pretty good. And like I said, with Russian – uh, Cooper, he was averaging eight yards a carry. No, he was killing it. He was so amazing. Was. He was amazing. He looked, he, he, you know, I, I actually did watch some highlights of this game and he looked like a man amongst boys, dude. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. He, he was did. Just different. And, you know, I remember seeing that, you know, after, after what, you know, the next week after the Florida game, I'm thinking, man, Cooper could be the next. He yeah. Could he could be was. the next. Yeah. Cause he was only a, uh, 
Oh, he was a freshman. Red I think he was a freshman. freshman. Yeah, freshman. Fresh yeah, we're, freshman. yeah. Yeah, I, I'm, uh, I'm yeah. going ahead a little bit here, but That's he okay. messed up. He messed up his knee at that stupid yeah. game in the in the um in Orlando with the messed up turf against Wisconsin, right. and he right. he was going to go to the NFL, have a good career, and he just tore oh, his yeah. knee up on that horrible field. Exactly, exactly. Oh. Even Daron Thomas got a little, uh, got about 30 yards. Oh, and again, the ball was, I mean, you got to give it to Marv, man. He was spreading the ball around, dude. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, Farquharson had 67, Collier 62, Epps 48, Aldarius Johnson 19, Benjamin 13, Shields. So, I mean, that's that's pretty cool. Everybody got something. And then, of course, looking at A&M, their leading rusher only had 67, but uh, and then their receiving was mostly that Fuller and McCoy. Looking at the defense, though, let's see. Miami had let's see one sack, two sack, three sacks. So they had three sacks. Oh wow! The they had Von Miller. Scroll down. They had yeah, Von Miller. Had Von Miller. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Wow. And if I ain't mistaken, I think he was at he was on the team in uh. 07, too, I believe. Kellen Hurd was a – he used to play for Miami. He transferred to, uh, to uh, the guy you see there, Kellen Hurd. He played for Miami, mm-hmm. then transferred to Texas a and Yeah. Jordan Pugh. Oh. Man, these are things I just remember. The, the last guy there, Jordan Pugh, we were recruiting him. He was a defensive tackle. Man, see, this is this is the funny thing is, like, you, you, you see these people on Twitter today, right, that – Yep. They think that they're the biggest Hurricane fans, and if you're critical about Mario, you're not a real – I'm like, you guys cannot look at other teams' rosters and see who you used to play for a team and, and right. things of that nature. It's like, you guys, it's like right, right. the details and the weeds of, like, the, the way that we know these – you know, the, the program is not – it's not normal. <laughs> right. Uh, also, this was – Miami gave this was AM's worst non conference loss at home since like 1988. So it was like, you know, 10 years, 20 years. And you know, you know, you know what the media and the fans were saying after this game? We're back. Oh, every time, all the time. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, because again, again, like I said, we're only six years removed from that 02. Yeah. Right. Know? So yeah, and and it and of course you know you're in Shannon's second year, you know, kind of sounds familiar, doesn't it? Yep. But I digress. Okay, now you know that warm fuzzy feeling you have right now, thinking that hey, Miami could be coming back. They're looking pretty good. Hold that thought, because the next game. North Carolina. Butch Davis. Second game. Sticking his damn tongue out, you know. So. Marvin Austin and the board. Mm-hmm. So I actually, I did watch some of the some of the highlights on this one, and and before we before we scroll down, I'm just going to give you some of my takes on what I saw. Oh. Uh, so, so yeah, Miami took the open and drive downfield for a touchdown, almost like a hot knife through butter, you know. And, of course, this game had that infamous, that punt return block. I think it was uh, number 24 hit that dude, blindside him. Y'all remember? remember. Used to have the, it, was, it was a big highlight for a while. But I call it the infamous punt block. But it 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 was it was it was a highlight for a few years afterwards. But anyway, here's the thing. Miami was up twenty four to fourteen. They had about ten minutes left in the game. All right. Well, North Carolina pulled off a seventy five yard touchdown pass with nine minutes left to go. Marv comes in and throws an interception with 
like six and a half minutes left. Uh, North Carolina then goes down, kicks the field goal. It's no good. All right. And then uh, UNC had the ball, got the ball back after that, after Miami squatted it. But uh, North Carolina threw a touchdown pass with 45 seconds left. I'm watching the highlights now. Then here's the kicker. Miami went down the field with Marv, okay? Went down the field, and it was like two seconds left. I mean, I think the play went off at like five seconds. Oh, but anyway, Marv threw a pass to Farkinson. The ball hit Farkinson in the hands. And I don't remember if it kind of went through or what, but it hit him in the hands, but it ended up like going through his hands and and the North Carolina guy intercepted it in the end zone with like two seconds left, dude. And it was a good pass. It was, I say it was high, but it was it was a good it was a pretty good location. It may have been just a spit high, but still, it hit it hit Farkinson right in the hands, dude. And it just at first I thought I thought that it was taken out of his hands, but it looked like it kind of just it, he just didn't. But anyway, what I'm getting at is. Miami had that game. <laughs> I'm just looking at this. This is I'm sidetracking again. Randy Shannon does his every second chance of being a head coach. Do you say that again? Randy Shannon deserves a second chance of being a head coach. Well, and I won't argue that point. I don't see why not. Only because you got to remember, you know, Shannon was the defensive coordinator before he moved up to head coach. So technically, this was his second year as a head coach altogether. You know, all. Uh, I mean, you know, I don't want to. The thing is, he recruited one. He had amazing coaching staff. He just didn't have the proper funding. Well, that too. That too. But, you know. Well, we'll we'll get into that. Later. Yeah, yeah, I know. We'll, we'll, sorry, we'll sorry, get sorry. that. We'll, we'll no, 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 no. What I'm saying is, I was gonna say, you know, again, you know, I talk about, I had that little rant earlier about the the guy and his extensive research, saying Cam Ward was the best since since uh, Dorsey, but yet he yeah. only did his research to Kaya, and he's just thinking off the cuff. He's better since uh, Dorsey, you know. But what I'm getting at is. You know, we talk about interchanging players like quarterbacks, but interchange coaches. You see what I'm getting at? You know. Yeah, I see. Oh, uh, that's all I'm saying. Anyway, so <laughs> looking at the numbers, I mean, look at this. Miami's defense held North Carolina to 35 yards rushing. 35. Miami had 135 yards rushing, but. Miami was, let's see, who was the quarterback? Yeah, Marv had two interceptions. Of course, the one was at the end of the game, but he still, Marv was 18 of 27, 135, three touchdowns and two interceptions. Uh, Harris got in there four of six for uh, 39. Um, I mean, UNC had like 300 yards total. Miami had 309 yards, so – even with Miami being up that that 24-14, like I said, with about 10 minutes left, you know, it, that that 75-yard pass to Hakeem Nix from Sexton, I think that kind of broke the spirit, to be honest with you. But, at, like I said, at the end, they drove down the field. And they were like on the – my God, they were, in, they were in the red zone, I know. Are close to it, but again, that damn North Carolina. I swear, you know. Of course, Miami had the two interceptions. That didn't help matters much either. Um, with the dirt field, I forgot about the dirt oh, field. Yeah. Oh yeah, the dirt field, buddy. The dirt field. So looking again, I mean, just at the like I said, the rushing yards for North Carolina. Greg Little had only thirty-eight yards. Uh, Hakeem Nix had 133 yards passing, but again, that one pass play for 75 yards, 74 yards, 
you know, you take that away and it it was kind of a it was a good defensive uh effort, you know. And and looking at Miami's numbers, I mean Cooper had 110 yards rushing. You know. And again, the passing, the ball was you know, you had some small numbers here and there, but everybody it got spread around. You don't see that much anymore. You know. And of course, the well, defense. I'm, I'm, now, now I see what happened. This is give credit to QB, right? We're up 14, 6, whatever. Then Randy Shannon puts to Corey Harrison. You and, cannot you know, do that. And that was something I was going to talk about during the season recap, but I'll mention it now. There was a lot of interchanging going on. There can't was, do that. you can't. No, I, I mean, I'm no expert but I have yet to see a team be successful running two quarterbacks in and out. Uh, Florida with uh, Tim Tebow and um, what number 12. Uh, what was uh, the guy's name? When they, uh, I know who you're talking about, but that's, Lee, that's Chris an anomaly. Lee, Chris Leak. Chris Leak. Chris Leak. I mean, yeah. that was kind of an anomaly. I mean, the, the norm is you really – I mean, unless you're doing a – you know, a run or a pass. Okay, that that's that could be a different story. But I'm just talking about like with this, with Marv and Harris. You know, just yeah, I don't I don't know. Yeah, that was yeah. So uh, just because I'm watching it and I forgot this game, and I'm like, oh, I already see where everything was screwed up. Uh it looks like uh, North Carolina only had two sacks, so they really they may have they may have troubled him, but they didn't get to him. And then our defense, they had two sacks. So, yeah, that lost that on the last, what did I say it was, the last six and a half minutes of the game or something like that. That, that To me, that was a heartbreaker, dude. That, that, that was – that's every, that's every UNC game. We've been saying that since since we mentioned the, uh, the ACC. Every UNC is a heartbreaker, especially since Butch got there. Yeah, yeah, he was an asshole. He was, but he he knew how to beat Miami. Yeah, no, that's he. Yeah, that's the. I mean, you know, I mean, you I, say what you. I mean, he he knew. I'm not trying to sidetrack was... here, but I, you know, I wanted when we hired, um, was it Golden? No, I don't know if it was Golden or, or Rick. I would have hired Butch instead of uh, Golden or Rick. I think it was Rick, because yeah. isn't that when uh, Butch was hobnobbing with? Uh, he was at what's FIU. His face? He was at FIU. Yeah, but he was hobnobbing with uh, what's his face? Oh. Uh, Oh crap! Who was the athletic director? Was that uh Pete Garcia? Garcia, yeah. Anyway, no, but yeah, he was he was he was politicking hard, dude. He really was. He really was politicking for that job. All right, so y'all ready to continue? No. All right, it's Florida State week. So yeah. And and if I remember correctly, I mean, yeah, here we go. Florida State just come out. I mean, they were up twenty four to nothing right before halftime. Luckily Bosher got a field goal. I remember I'm like, oh my gosh, here we go. Cause you know, after that A and M game, I was feeling pretty good. I'm like, all right. We, you know, we had that little thing against Florida to be expected. They're good. But, yeah, the A&M win, started feeling better, feeling really good. And then North Carolina hit. And then Florida State just comes out, you know. I mean, when a Florida State kicker hits a 53-yard field goal, bro, you know, oh, Miami tried to make a game. I mean, they uh, – let's see, where is it at? Yeah, they got to uh, – 34 to 32, but then it just – Florida State just pulled away. I don't remember this game like I used to. What what, what was the key thing here? Who's was – was the Corey Harris a quarterback the whole game? 
Oh, actually, Marv was. Marv was. Huh? But he had two interceptions. Harris gets in there. Points. He had an interception. Oh. Now, I think this is the – yeah, okay. Okay, I remember. Okay, Travis Benjamin caught a 51-yard touchdown pass from Cooper. It was a running back pass. Yeah, I don't remember this game. I'm going to have to rewatch it. I've I've kind of – I've probably blocked it out. Okay, QB says, yeah, Christian Ponder scrambling was what happened. And, you know – Oh, now players. I remember this game. Now I remember. Yeah. Uh, I mean, even – I mean, Christian Ponder – he had two interceptions. He was a uh, fourteen to thirty-one, one hundred fifty nine. I mean, look at this right here. This is what happened. Florida State had three hundred and ten yards rushing on four touchdowns. Miami had fifty one. And, you know, I think that was that was the tail of the tape. They just ran the ball. Cause Ponder ain't do do crap. I mean, he had two interceptions. Oh, uh, of course, like I said, Marv had two interceptions. Harris had one interception. And, you know, my uh, Florida State outgame Miami 469 to 256. And Florida State even lost two fumbles. They fumbled the ball four times and lost two of them. I'm like, man, they even had not eight. And look, they even had 98 oh. yards and penalties. Sorry, hey, John. I just saw I just saw the ending of the uh North Carolina game. We could have yeah, won see, that game. Oh, he you see what I'm saying? Where, yeah, he yes, had it. Yes. He had it two times. He grabbed it yes. two times and then he dropped it. Yes. And that was on the dime. Wow. It, it was. It I mean, One. some people I mean, you could probably it may, but I think that it was thrown where it probably needed to be thrown. Yeah, there was no other place to throw Sorry to, to, but, to the strike. No, no, no. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. That's why I we didn't do, do my this. homework this week. That's why. That's okay. It's okay. Oh. Uh, but yeah, to 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 uh back up QB, what he said, Ponder had 144 yards rushing. That's that's the game right there, dude. You know, when your quarterback's the leading rusher for, for both out of the whole game, yeah, you know at that, that, that. I mean, he averaged almost seven over seven and a half yards a carry, dude. I mean, it, it's like, wow. And of course, we're going to get to some more rushing defense highlights too as we get through the season. The one so, thing I could say we're being competitive, right? Oh, most definitely. Most definitely. I mean, because anyway, look, because like I said, let's just look. Miami was down 24 to 3 at halftime. And they cut, you know, they they gave up some points, but they still came back. You know, it ended up losing, you know, uh, I mean, they did score a touchdown with 14 seconds left. So, I mean, it's not like they just laid down. What was the comeback? Well, how did we come back? Do you remember? Who was, cause, I mean, it says here that Marv played horrible. So how did we come back? Well, I mean, it, it looks like they just chipped away. Oh, um, was it rushing or passing? Well, you had that 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 fifty one yard touchdown that that running back pass. Oh, uh, oh, Sean Spence had a seven yard interception return, and we had a field goal. They had a safety. Miami had a safety, a field goal. It looks like they just chipped away at it, you know. Um, but I just, I just didn't have the heart to watch the game. But yeah, it just looks like you know that the the with Ponder running the ball, you know, and then just giving up the three interceptions and Ponder running the ball. It just gave the defense fits, but the offense did chip away. I mean, Benjamin did have three receptions for 71 yards and a touchdown. That's not bad. Do, 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 do. Wait a minute. I'm sorry. Yeah, Benjamin caught. Yeah, he, Greg Cooper threw the threw the ball. That's right. Okay. Okay. Get your shit straight, dude. Get your shit straight. Ah, uh, Badoo. 
let's see. Oh, Florida State had two, three, four, five, six sacks. And Miami on oh, Miami had one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine sacks. So I mean the defense was was getting to Ponder, but when Ponder squibbled out of there, he was gone. Honestly, from what I, I that's that was probably the the biggest thing. But I hate you know, Florida State. I do too. I mean it now Miami already lost to Florida. Now they lost to Florida State. I was I was really in the dumps after that. <laughs> but this game was a monsoon. I forgot that it's it was like a rainy game. It was like a monsoon the whole game. I'm watching it? her yeah, I'm watching her right now. It's okay. just this whole game is just raining, yeah. raining and it's like yeah, it was bad. Well, but it was what it was. Okay. Next game. That is going to be UCF. <laughs> Mighty UCF. I mean, basically... It's like Miami just couldn't score. <laughs> I mean, you know, they were up, you know, 10 to nothing. I mean, you know, Benjamin had a 25-yard passing touchdown. Bosch, you're a field goal. And then, of course, uh, Janelle Neal had a 62-yard interception in the second quarter. Miami did get a safety. And then Cooper had a five-yard run, but – uh Mr. Burnett had a 91-yard kickoff return, you know. So, UCF scored on an interception and a kickoff return. So, but the offense for Miami just couldn't seem to get it to get it going. Oh, uh, I mean, yeah, look, UCF had four yards rushing, dude. Four yards. But Miami was only able to muster 128. Oh, uh, of course, <laughs> Marv had three interceptions. That doesn't help matters much. If if, if I don't know if y'all been keeping score or keeping track, but Marv seems to have a problem throwing the ball to uh, completing the ball, completing the pass to a opposing team's player. Oh. Well, he's a red shirt. I know, I know, but I'm just you saying. Know, this is the, I, I know. I, this I is know, my thing. One of our coaches, so one of our coaches has to bite the bullet in one year and say, "All right, we're going to suck. We're going to be oh, horrible yeah. year one. I'm going to let my quarterbacks, running backs, off just play horrible. Let them." grow until but we oh, right 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 we, you know it's just uh, sorry go ahead <laughs> no no i mean you're right and and you know i don't i don't do this to compare to justify my frustration with present day miami but we said this before cuban there are so many similarities you know say this year take take uh take cam out the picture You know, I'm not saying that, that Jakari would be Robert Marv, but, you know, it, it's just, it's, it's crazy. Just, just a, a first year quarterback with the true freshman sitting on the bench, you know, until I'm anyway. proven otherwise, I'm going to compare every season to our current season until we change. I'm going to compare. Oh, but well, again, it, it and what I mean is not so much me comparing this 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 past 2023 season to everything that we've gone through, but it's just to see the similarities and the as you said, uh, Cuban, the wash, rinse, repeat. You know, it's like again we see the same thing every year. 
You know, it's the same trends. You know what I'm getting at? Yeah. It's it's crazy. But anyway, uh I mean, yeah, the 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 quarterback for for UCF only had seven seventy four yards. You know, he was eleven to thirty five. Hell, that's that's almost uh, Emory esque. But anyway, oh, uh, I mean, UCF really wasn't doing anything offensively. Oh, uh, it, it just, I mean, Cooper had ninety yards rushing. He had nine yards receiving. Uh, but, you know, it looks like Harris, he was running for his life. Chambers even got a couple of catches, a couple of touches. Uh, as far as receiving goes, I mean, Travis Benjamin looks like he was the leading receiver with 34 yards on two catches. So, you know, <laughs> this is crazy. Now, this is interesting. This is what I was wanting to see. Oh, uh, you know, this Bruce Miller, he had three sacks. You know, uh, I, it just, I, I, it looks like to me that UCF played a decent defensive game and the interceptions, the turnovers, whatever, just helped them out even greatly because, You know, if you take away the interception and the kickoff return, Miami wins twenty to nothing. Okay, no big deal. But some definite definite growing pains. Definite growing pains when it comes to Robert Marv. You know. And I, 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 I think I remember hearing some grumblings about about Marv back then. But, again, Miami got the win. Okay, great. We beat somebody we were supposed to. All right. Miami's at 3-3 three and three now. So, next game. Next game. This was an interesting game, by the way. It really was. The Dukies. The Blue Devils. So, what, when I say it was an interesting game, the first half was it's like Miami woke up in the second half, dude. You know, from my, from my notes I took, I think Miami had like 400, 420 yards in the second half of offense. You know, the, they, they woke up. Um, so in the first, it's like Miami, I see uh, Johnson had a 17 yard pass. And then, uh, Duke had a pass for a touchdown, then a one-yard run, and a 40-yard field goal. They up 17-7. to seven. Uh, Luckily, Zellner caught a pass from Ja'Cory Harris, made it 17-14 uh, come halftime. And I remember thinking, oh, my gosh. We're only beating – we're losing to Duke by three points at halftime. And, you know, because back then – you know, it was still unfathomable to think that Duke could beat Miami in football, you know. But uh, Duke come out, got that pass. He has 24-14, and then it just – it was like the light switch went on, and this Miami team just steamrolled through the third quarter. I mean, he had 21 points on a 15-yard run by Harris – Johnson called a six-yard pass. Benjamin called a 25-yard pass, both for touchdowns. Miami took the lead. And then Jakari coming. It was like Jakari coming here and just took over. Uh, and old McNeil, old Chambre McNeil got him a touchdown. Uh, whoops. Now, Duke did come back with a late touchdown, but it didn't matter. Uh so yeah, most it looks like most of Miami's yards they 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 got in the second half. Why does it say total yards? I thought. Well, regardless of the fact, they come back. Oh, 152 yards rushing for Miami, 266 yards passing. Now, <laughs> looks like uh, 
Chikori got most of the play in time. He had four touchdowns, but two interceptions. Marv had one touchdown and one interception. So, you know, at least they're completing passes. <laughs> they're hitting the target, even if it isn't the right target. Oh, my gosh. Oh, and, of course, Thaddeus Lewis for Duke, he, he was 12-28-130. Uh, rushing for Miami, Harris Jakari was the, the leading rusher with 53 yards. No, I take that back. Cooper had 64, then Harris with 53. I, I can't read. Uh, so those were your two main rushers. James did get a little play in time in this game. He got 13 yards. Uh, even Marv had a scramble for or probably a – Probably was a scramble for 11 yards. Now, receiving, again, the ball was passed around very nicely. You know, Benjamin had 45. Aldarius had 84. Bird, 29, et cetera, et cetera. So everybody got a piece of the pie. As far as Duke goes, uh, they had a couple of running backs with 69 and 56 yards. Some uh, receivers were 48-36. As far as the defense goes, it looks like we had one sack by Ojimo. Now, as far as Duke goes, they had a couple of sacks. But uh, it looks like I Darko had two interceptions and Vincent Ray had an interception. Oh. so yeah, it was, it was just they, uh, it was crazy. They come back and won that game. <laughs> excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. All right, moving right along. Miami is four and three now. It is four and three, right? Yeah, four and three. They're on the winning side. Uh, next game, game number eight. Wake Forest. Hmm. Miami pulls it out. 16 to 10. Uh, one thing about this victory. It's the first time since 2006 Miami had consecutive ACC conference game wins. I just say it. Ah. Uh, So it looks like uh the do 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 Miami only scored one touchdown, which was a Robert Marv run yard run. Everything else was all Boshier kicking the ball. The defense held Wake Forest to one touchdown. That was in the first quarter. And then they got a field goal. So oh my gosh. Uh, Wake Forest did have 195 yards rushing with one touchdown. Miami had 102. Uh, Wake Forest could not pass the ball. Looks like all they did was run the ball. Their quarterback was 3 of 8, 57 yards. And lo and behold, check it out. No interceptions for for Marv R. Harris this game. Uh, Marv was 11 of 20 for 153. Jakari was 41, uh, 4 of 8 for 41, excuse me. Miami did have 102 yards rushing with a rushing touchdown, like I said. Uh, Wake Forest did have a fumble they lost. Uh, Miami did outgain them 296 to 252. So, ba doop boop, boop, boom. Uh, looks like. Yeah, Marv was the leading rusher. Uh, Benjamin led the receivers, but again, the ball was passed around rather well. Let's see. Wake Forest had one sack. Miami looks like they had two sacks. It was just low-scoring game. Okay. This brings us to the next game. So right now, Miami is on a three-game winning streak. <laughs> Next week, Miami takes on Virginia. 
the dreaded Virginia Cavaliers. All right. Miami pulls it out 24 to 17 in overtime. Oh. Um, now, now uh Harris, Jacora Harris hit a he threw a touchdown pass to LaRon Bird with 55 seconds, about 55 seconds left to tie the game up. Um, and then in overtime, Miami got the ball and uh Harris threw the winning touchdown to Aldarius Johnson. And then on the next set of downs, Virginia had the ball. I believe I believe the ball was stripped out the running back's hands for Virginia game over. But uh, it was just another another low scoring affair. Had a uh, Robert Marv had a uh, field uh, rushing touchdown. Bosher had a field goal. Then of course the LeRon Bird touchdown pass. Uh looks like you know Miami had almost 200 yards rushing with a touchdown. Virginia didn't really get much going. Of course, Marv threw another interception. <laughs> uh Miami did fumble the ball three times and and lost two of them. So that was three turnovers. That's probably what helped keep kept Virginia in the game. Now, Virginia rushed the ball 24 times for 78 yards and a touchdown. Uh, quarterback was 27-41 for 240 and a touchdown. Total yards 318 for Virginia, 448 for Miami. Of course, they both <laughs> – both teams had three uh, three fumbles apiece, and both of them lost two fumbles. So that gave Miami three turnovers, Virginia two turnovers. That's just ugly. I'm sorry. That's just ugly. Oh. Cooper had 131 yards rushing. Uh, James, come back. He's got 55 yards. Uh, as far as receiving, again, everybody had a piece of the pie. Nobody really stood out. Uh, Collier had 64 yards receiving, but everybody else just got a little bit here, a little bit there. Uh, leading rusher for Virginia was uh, Pierman. And do -do 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 -do. looks like uh, they're, they're running back Ogletree. Or no, the receiver Ogletree had 71 yards receiving, but... Oh, a couple of things there, but doom, 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 doom. let's see. I tell you, that Bailey had him a sack, and Virginia had two sacks. So, again, it wasn't pretty. They won in overtime, and we head into week 10. All right, we're going to take a quick halftime break. I got to go pee. We're going to come right back, all right? So you don't y'all go anywhere. It's going to get better, I promise. <laughs>
All right, all right, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. Okay. Got a little rain coming down out there. All righty, so here we are, game 10. Thursday night game against Virginia Tech. And in this game, it was senior night. It was like 23 seniors. But most notably, excuse me, excuse me, Jim Kelly, Cortez Kennedy, Jim Otto, Gino Toretta, and Edron James were all inducted into the Ring of Honor. So it was a very uh, important night. And... <laughs> You know how it goes with important nights at Miami. They pulled it off. They pulled it off. Oh. Really? The the the, the scoring summary, Javaris James had a rushing rushing touchdown and Boscher had like three field goals. Uh Tyrod Taylor for Virginia Tech had a fourteen yard run. And then he had a six-yard run at the end. Luckily, they held on. <clears throat> Excuse me, Miami held on. So, looking at the stats, uh, 13 first downs for Miami, 14 for Virginia Tech. Miami did have 123 yards rushing with the touchdown. Like I said, that was the only touchdown they had. Uh, Virginia Tech only had 77 yards rushing. Uh, passing. Tyrod still Taylor here, was, by the way. I know, I know, I know. I just, I just had to step away. I had to go pee. I apologize, but I know you're here. I know you're here. I see you still there. Oh, <coughs> uh, no, I'm not going to tell you what happened. I'm not going to spoil anything. Oh, uh, so let's see. Tyrod, like I said, he's Tyrod was six of twelve for seventy-five. Sean Glennon was six of eight for ninety-eight. Uh, Marv was 7 of 16 for 121, and Jakari completed one pass for three yards. Do, 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 do. Virginia Tech rushing, Evans and Taylor both had 43 yards. Of course, Tyrod was one of those Michael Vick-esque type of quarterbacks that we Miami fans have all grown to know and love. Uh, <laughs> looks like Glennon got sacked uh a couple of times, probably he had negative 11 yards. Uh, looks like their leading receiver was Cole with 59. <coughs> Excuse me. Goodness gracious. Uh, Cooper. Cooper had 52 yards rushing. Marv with 44. James had 29. Uh, really, only two like two main receivers. I mean, James got one pass for 19, but uh, Adarius Johnson had 48 and Farkinson had 50. Doom, 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 doom. Looks like, oh, yeah, they got to the quarterback. Let's see. That's two, three, five, six, seven, seven sacks for Virginia Tech's defense. And Miami, it looks like Marcus Robinson had a field day. He had three sacks. And then one, two, three. So they had six sacks. It was, it was, the defense seems to be seemed to have been doing pretty good considering you had Tyrod Taylor under center or at the quarterback position. Oh. Uh, like I said, 16 to 14, one touchdown. The rest was field goals. And Miami moved up to seven and three. So things are looking pretty good. Looking pretty good. But guess who the next opponent is for Miami? That's right. Georgia Tech. We win this game, right? We win. We beat Georgia Tech in North Carolina. That's a win, right? I'm sure there was a victory somewhere in that game. Oh my gosh, this is where it gets bad. This is where it gets bad. It was bad. It was bad. It really was. Because 
actually, I sat down to watch this. I was going to watch the whole game today, this morning, just to see how bad was it, you know? And <sighs> it was bad. It was bad. Oh, basically in a nutshell, oh, the running backs for Georgia Tech, that Dwyer, I mean, I know he was the ACC leading rusher, but they were just running over Miami, just running over them. You know, oh, let's see. Yeah. Georgia Tech had 472 yards rushing. That was, at that time, that was the second most yards ever allowed rushing by Miami. Ever. 472. And that was, what was that, like 10 years before the big 600 and something yards rushing North Carolina had on us? Was it 2018 they did that? I think it was. But still, it dude, look, it it, it was bad. It, it really was. I mean, yeah, Miami jumped out. Well, Georgia Tech jumped out to a, you know, 13 to nothing lead and never or never looked back. You know, they just ran the ball. Dwyer, uh, who was it? Where you at? Where you at? Where you at? Yeah, Dwyer had 128 yards. Nesbitt, the quarterback, had 93. Now, of course, this is this is the Georgia Tech running that spread offense. I think they spread well, no, option. this no, this is the option, not the spread. What the hell's spread option? This is the option. Op well, well, you know what I'm saying. This is the wing T power yeah. wing T. It don't matter what you call it. You can call it what you want to. They still ran over our ass. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was. And it gets it, worse. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dude. Anyway, we haven't got to. Uh, D'Onofrio. We haven't got to best yet. Oh. Uh, so. Oh. <laughs> uh, Marv was 10 or 20. Well, let's look back here. So, yeah, Georgia Tech had a grand. I mean, at least they only. Gave up 46 yards on passing, but that's because they were too busy running the damn ball. So Georgia Tech ended up with 518 total yards. Miami had 388. Uh, Marv was 10 of 20 with the touchdown and interception. Harris was 13 of 18, uh, 162 to Marv's 121. Uh, Harris had two touchdowns, one interception. Um. You know, Cooper had 44 yards rushing, James 30, Harris had 35. Again, uh, everybody got a piece of the pie when it came to receiving. They, the numbers were a little low, but everybody touched the ball. But Georgia Tech, oh, my gosh. And then Cox, that's the other guy. Cox, Roddy Jones, uh, Shaw, of course, uh, Dwyer. It's like whoever touched the ball just 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 ran over him. Just you know, it, oh my gosh, it was bad. I really ain't no need looking at the defense, but uh yeah, that was really the name of the game. Georgia Tech just ran the ball at will. It just it was it was bad. It, it really was. Uh and of course this was the first game. I I forgot to mention this. This was Miami came to this game ranked 23. They played at at Atlanta. Miami came to this game ranked number 23. The first time Miami had been ranked since September of 2006. And this happened because you know even though the the the, the last few games before Georgia Tech were kind of close a little ugly or whatever but i mean still Miami came in 7 and 3 i'm like okay we we could possibly hit 10 wins you know maybe 9 wins see what happened no nope, no nope, Georgia Tech always that Georgia Tech and 
after you know with this loss to Georgia Tech, Miami was on a is a, was on a four game losing streak to Georgia Tech going back to two thousand started in two thousand five. Anybody think we're going to beat Georgia Tech this year? But yeah, it it was bad. I mean, the same defense that did what they did to A and M, you know, ah, uh, what was the other game? And then Florida, you know, the way the defense played. I mean, it got you know late in the game, but. And then turn around and do this with Georgia Tech. Oh, my gosh. And, of course, this was a Thursday night game also. So everybody in the world got to see it. So, yeah. And I believe, was it? No, no, it wasn't this game. So, hey, Phil, what's happening, dude? Glad you can make it, buddy. Glad you can make it. Um. I'm just going to come out and say it. If y'all think it's about to get any better, nah. No, it's not. Okay, next game. Next game was uh, the last game of the year uh, against NC State. Anybody want to venture who the quarterback was for NC State in 2008? The one and only Russell Wilson. And, of course, you know, Miami dropped it 38-28. to 28. But at least Miami Russell scored Wilson it. is the answer. Very good, very good, very good. <laughs> oh, man. So, <laughs> now they say Miami is still 23 coming into this game. I don't see how. But, anyway. Um. Uh, NC State, I mean, really, of course, the game, I mean, the, you know, NC State had 219 yards rushing. Miami had 122, but uh, Marv, Marv had two interceptions. Ja'Cory Harris had two interceptions. <laughs> that, that, you know, before we go any further, I'm just going to have to say that I really think those those interceptions really really and again they were young quarterbacks I'm not blaming the quarterbacks I'm just saying if it hadn't have been for all those interceptions things may have been different I'm not saying they would have been undefeated but could have been different oh I mean Miami had 391 total yards NC State had 439 uh, Russell Wilson was 11 of 23 for 220, so it wasn't like he put up gaudy numbers. He had two touchdowns. Uh, it's just I, those those four turnovers killed him, dude. They just killed him. You know, Miami had 122 yards rushing, 269 passing, two touchdowns, but the four interceptions killed him. Uh, James come out, had 65 yards rushing. Cooper had 48. The two-headed monster was starting to come to life. Uh, look at Epps. Epps had 101 yards receiving. Collier, 55. Bird, 47. Khalil, 18. But four interceptions. Now, Russell Wilson did have 58 yards rushing. Uh, looks like Andre Brown had 93 uh, as far as the receiving goes, you know, Spencer, Graham, 59 and 63, but nothing really outrageous, just the four turnovers. You know, uh, one, two, four, five sacks for Miami. And it looks like four different cats had interceptions for, for NC State. And they they only had they only recorded two sacks, so you know it wasn't. It's just those four interceptions killed him, man. It killed him. So 
with that being said, the regular season came to a close. Miami finished seven and five. And with that being said, the final standings for 2008 in the ACC. Uh, Florida State won the Atlantic and Virginia Tech won the Coastal. And of course, Virginia Tech beat Florida State in the championship game. Went on to play in the Orange Bowl. Whoop, you ain't supposed to see that Florida game, Miami game yet. Look how bad Clemson is. Oh, I know. Oh, yeah. This is this was, yeah. Oh, yeah. But the thing is, they did get up to number nine. But yeah, you're right. You know, and then, you know, NC State, NC State was five and seven when Miami played them. Five and seven. Miami comes in seven and five. Oh. Uh, Miami did finish well. Okay, they went to zero and five by the end. They must have had some Butch Davis issues or something. I don't know, but still, we beat Virginia know. Tech, right? Yes, we beat Virginia Tech. Lost to Georgia yes. Tech. Lost to North Carolina. There we go. But we beat Virginia and Duke, though. You know. Yeah, but yeah. I know, I know, I know where you're getting at. You know that was another thing because. I don't. I didn't even think to see what Virginia Tech was ranked when we played them. Uh, let me see here. Do, 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 do. Let's see. Where's the schedule for this? I want to look and see what they were ranked when we played them. Oh, it doesn't have. I wonder why it doesn't have them ranked when we played them. Let me look at this right quick. Do, 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 do. I know I'm all over the shop. Just deal with it for a second. Huh. It says they weren't ranked when we played them. It's kind of odd. Kind of odd. But anyway. So, yeah, you know, there it is. Miami finished basically fourth place in the Coastal, which was better than last year. <laughs> and, you know, they, they finished the regular season seven and five. You know, kind of sounds familiar, doesn't it? Pretty so, much. Yeah. So with that being said, with, with the regular season over, Miami gets an invite to the Emerald Bowl out there in California against the Cal Bears. So basically this was a home game for Miami, for, for uh, Cal. Um, the only thing I can say, I can say two words to sum up Cal. Javid Best. Job at best. That, that's all I'm going to say. That's okay. Let's just go ahead and pull the band aid off. So, do you remember the speech at the end of the game? Crap. I did, I forgot about that. What was it? Refresh my memory. Well, I'll let you finish then. When we, when we get to the end okay. of the game, I'll tell you. Okay. All right. Oh. <laughs> uh, now I did I did watch some highlights of this game. They had one of those condensed ones, so I watched it. And basically, Javid Best just ran. When I say, I mean, I just thought that Dwyer from Georgia Tech ran over our defense. No, Best just ran over them, all of them. You know, uh, but Miami, you know, Harris. Jacari was doing a good job. I mean, Miami hung with him, you know. Uh, basically, what happened is, you know, where was it? Yeah, my, it was tied up 17-17. And Miami had the ball late in the game. And it was like a, was it a third down? Did I write it down? 
No, I did. Anyway, it was a pass play, and, and Jakari got uh, Jakari got got sacked from the back, lost the ball. The guy picked it up and ran it back to the two yard line, two and a half yard line, and then, you know, with that, as you can see, the two minutes and forty one seconds, Cal just basically ran it in. And that was the go-ahead score, Oh. Uh, because it, you know, even though even though Best was running his ass off, I mean, Cal had 217 yards rushing to Miami's 119. Uh Miami was still in it, you know. And honestly, if ah, uh, what was that quarterback's name? Longshore, that's his name. If if he was a little bit better, I say better, but if he would have been a little bit more accurate instead of being 10 of 21, oh, it would have been a blowout. Blowout for sure. Cause uh I'm just I'm glad that, that Longshore wasn't even it was as bad as he was. You know. And also I believe Best Javid Best left the game with the injury like It must have been like around ten minutes. Don't quote me on the time, but it was it was early in the fourth quarter. He went out with the injury. So, you know, God only knows what would happened if he had the whole fourth quarter to run. Yeah, and he he was drafted pretty high too, because he, yes, like, he was he was like a speedy uh, guy. He like ran yeah, like a he, four, was, three he, or was, four, four. he was big too though. He was fast. He, wasn't, he, he was. He was fast and strong. You know, he wasn't a small guy, but he, he yet yeah, boy, look out. Uh, so Miami had 119 rushing, Cal 217, like I said. Uh, Harris played the whole game, went 25 of 41 for two touchdowns and one interception. And, of course, he had that fumble, but then again, it was a, a backside, blindside sack. Uh, Cal only outgained Miami 338 to 313 in total yards. Of course, Miami had the two turnovers. Uh, Cal had one. Uh, Cooper and Chambers. Lee Chambers had a pretty decent game. He had 60 yards rushing. Cooper had 63. Uh, receiving, again, the ball was passed around. Zellner, 48. Bird, 44. Uh Hankerson, Hankerson got into the action, you know, 41 yards. On Hankerson, one that was a year that Hankerson had the issues of dropping the ball. I, I believe so. Yep. Uh, that was a year. And then yeah. next year he was just, he caught everything. <laughs> yeah. It was like he had stick them on his hands, you know? Yeah. Well, he trained with but, uh, Mark, Mark Clayton in the off season. Oh, okay. Okay. okay and then okay. he got his catching together. Right. I'm sorry, and, Chris and Carter. It was Chris Carter. Chris Carter. Okay, okay. Okay, so yeah, so Best ended up with 186 yards rushing. He was averaging nine, a little over nine yards a carry. I mean, <laughs> what do you do about that, you know? Oh, uh, but, you know, you had that one receiver. He had that 174-yard uh, catch, Tucker. And then, of course, the defense didn't really get. They couldn't. They they couldn't tackle best very well. But, and of course, the uh, defense for for Cal, believe it or not. Okay, well, uh, Follett had two sacks. Uh, do, 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 let's see. He had the interception. Who had that fumble? Cameron Jordan. That was his name. He had that fumble return for seven yards. So they must have had the ball on like the 10 or something. But anyway, like I said, it, California was running the ball, but Miami stayed with them, come back. I mean, it. but that, that fumble at the end just kind of <laughs> did it. So – Miami finishes the 2008 season. So, seven yeah. so at the end of the game, our quarterback tried his Tim Tebow um, thing. 
I promise you, he got in the bus. He's like, I promise you guys, we'll never lose like this again. We're going to work our asses off in the off season. And he, they recorded this on at the time. Kane's all access. I got to, if I find it, I'll send it to you. But he was like, we're, this is it. We're not going to lose again. He was trying to be a leader. Then yeah, Miami's Miami. So he tried his passionate speech at the end of the season <laughs> and they recorded it. Oh, wow. So because Marv quit before the game, I think. I, you know, I want to say I, I I agree with you on that. Yeah, I believe that's oh crap. So Jacory yeah. Harris tried to yeah, Jacory Harris tried to take this his the team on his back and mm-hmm. pretty much he's like I'm not gonna give up on you. He threw Marv under the bus and it's like come on, right? Because that's when Marv went to uh, per- Purdue, Purdue, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Purdue. Yeah. <laughs> well. Oh, now again, this was, was that 15 years ago? So I may be kind of foggy on a lot of stuff, but I do, like I said earlier, you know, Marv was catching a lot of flack for the interceptions, you know, but he also had some flashes of, of, I don't want to say greatness, but he had flashes of good play. You know, he was a true freshman. Not well, he, kind of was it, a true freshman. <laughs> it was his first year start playing. Yeah, first year, yeah. You know, because the year before he was a freshman last in '07, but you had Wright and Freeman, right, doing their thing. So technically, '08 was the first time for both Harris and Marv. You know, well. Marv at least had college. He's been in a college program. Harris yeah. was a true freshman. True out of freshman. High school. Yeah. And, and you know, you said something the other day uh, about Jacory Jacory being too small. And honestly, you're right. He could have he could have used a little bulking up. Yep. You know, but, you know, there's there's a, you know, as good as those young men were in high school, you know, you step up to the college game and everybody's fast and faster. It's Yeah. And, it, and it's you're you're kind of I mean, I went to college. I remember my freshman year versus a senior year as like kid. It was just a completely yeah. different thing. Right. It's like it is, yeah. you're going from high school against going against somebody's potentially going to the job jump for so oh yeah it's like you know it, the thing that the, the thing that frustrates frustrates me about this program is just the mismanagement of it and it's like yeah. let's do the proper thing if you see a guy that the string bean let him sit one year out get, gain some weight do the kid a favor you know because it's going to help the kid out but that's you know there oh you're absolutely right dude you're absolutely right. So are we going to our favorite part of the show now? I wish Shad was on. <laughs> Upgrade might... or downgrade? <coughs> Let's uh, let, let me get through this end of the year stats. Okay. Uh, because we're just going to look at the team stats. Then we'll look at some individual offensive and defensive stats. Nothing major. That's fine. <coughs> Excuse me. Man, all this pollen and crap in here is killing me. All right, let me let me share my screen here. Get away from there. All right. So, for the year, for the year. Excuse me. It looks like uh, Miami outscored their opponent totally, three fifty-two to three fourteen. They outscored their opponent outscored their opponent by about three points a game. Uh, <clears throat> no surprise here, but Miami was outrushed by their opponents by almost three hundred yards total. Uh, which is about. About mm, 20 yards a game. 
Oh, do 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 do. Passing, passing. They did. They they uh ended up going for twenty five fifty eight yardage uh for the year in passing. The opponents twenty one fifty three. Oh, now this is pretty interesting too. Miami only averaged ten, almost just under eleven yards a pass. Uh their opponents twelve and a half. But for the game average, they were up by like 30 yards. They did uh, have 22 passing touchdowns. Now, also Miami had about six more plays on offense than the than their opponents. But it was kind of kind of the same. Where? Here's my number. Because I was using the sports reference. I didn't use my other thing for the third down. So, for the year, Miami had 34% third down conversion rate. That <laughs> That's not going to do you very well. And that seems to be a trend again. We spoke about this last time, but I don't know what it is about Miami and third downs. Now, luckily, the opponent was only 36% on third down. Oh, Miami did have 31 sacks. Do 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 do. Oh, they did have an onside kick. <laughs> All right. I mean, if y'all want to see the attendance numbers, there it is. Uh, score by quarter. It looks like Miami did get better in the fourth quarter. They were actually outscoring their opponents by you know, 12 points in the fourth quarter, which is something we didn't see last year, I believe. Uh, third quarter, total domination in the third quarter. Second quarter really didn't do much, but they did outscore their opponents. Total, total score. So, of course, when you play the uh, Charleston Southern and all that, that kind of helps out a little bit. <laughs> All right, let me let me zoom this out just a little bit here so we can see all this. All right, our individual stats offensively. So Cooper ended up with 288 yard. Uh, excuse me, ended up with 888 yards for the season. Ah, uh, oh no, I take that back. He had a lot. Okay, here's our total. Here's our total right here. Right here. 841 yards rushing. James had 286. Of course, James missed some games due to injury. Uh, Marv and Chambers, a little over 100. Daron Thomas, a little over 100. Harris had 100. So, really, Cooper was was the go-getter on rushing. Uh, it's just, I mean, I hated to see James be out. Because Cooper and James, that, that was a hell of a tandem. Hell of a tandem. Uh, do, 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 Okay, passing. Oh, boy. <coughs> this this is interesting. So, Marv only played 11 games. Jaquari played 13. Uh, Marv had 13 interceptions for 1,200, almost 1,300 yards. Harris, as a true freshman, he was a 118 of 194 with seven interceptions uh, for almost 1,200 yards passing. He did have 12 touchdowns. Marv only had nine. So, you know, with Harris, I mean, that's that's not bad considering this is a true freshman who was just in high school the year before and basically pay, played in every game. You know, it's not bad. You know, not bad. So our leading receivers. Oh, uh, I wish they'd have put this in number or uh, numerical order here. But it looks like uh, do, 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 do. Theron Collier had 324, uh, Johnson 332. And, and the one thing that really st sticks out in my mind is, is how much the ball was spread around, you know. Um, they had uh, to do, 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 do 22 
passing touchdowns. Yeah, because Cooper had that one pass. That's right. So, I mean, the ball was spread out. It wasn't like one receiver got a 1,000 yards, you know. It was spread out really, really well. Oh, uh, they did have two punt return. It only had one punt return for a touchdown. That was Cooper. Interceptions. Oh, uh, looks like they had a total of four interceptions. No kickoff returns for a touchdown. So, I guess, is there anything else we need to talk about? No. So, I guess to, 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 uh, to finish up this, this 08 season, really, you had, basically, you had two freshman quarterbacks. One just come out of high school. One was red shirt. But it was basically their first year on the field. And, and mistakes were made. Mistakes were made. Uh, the end of the season, they ended up, let's see, one, two, three. So they ended the season on a three-game losing streak. Um. But that Georgia Tech game, oh my gosh, that that was crazy. But North Andy Carolina Shannon, as well. Well, that too, that too. Oh, uh, the usual suspects that yep. we're all accustomed to. Rinse and repeat. Yes, yes. Um. So 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 Randy Shannon finished seven and six in his second year. Sound familiar? Hmm. What was his um, recruiting class again? <laughs> well, the 08 was, we you know, number one in the country. Uh, and Mario's, this year we had uh, Mario's second year was what, number five, six? Something like that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Just, just not, yeah. Sorry. And this, you know, just. Uh, well, no, I mean, it. You know, and, and, and very we, I similar. Had, I had talked about this a while back, but you know, in 07, Shannon finished five and seven his first year. Mm -hmm. Mario finished five and seven his first year. Yep. And second year, Shannon finishes seven and six. Mario finishes seven and six. Um, as far as competition level goes. It, honestly, probably tit for tat. I think, I think this 08 team basically, I can't say they shot themselves in the foot because you had a fresh, a true freshman quarterback and a, a redshirt quarterback that just, redshirt freshman quarterback that just started. They never touched the field. Right. You had TVD, which was a third year. Fourth year. Third year, fourth, fourth year, year, COVID, yeah. COVID junior or whatever he was, you know. So, and Randy Shannon was, I mean, he didn't do any other head coaching. I know, like I said, he he come off being the defense coordinator, took over after Coker got fired. Uh, the coaching staff was – just as good, if not better, maybe at the time, probably about the same. But now they're – I'm just saying, again, I'm not trying to compare. I'm just trying to show the similarities or, you know, okay, let, let's let's play games. Let's play – okay, first let's play your game, Cuban. Let's play your game first. Upgrade or downgrade? All right, let's do it. 2024-2023. Uh, let's go with what we know, and all we know is 2023. Well, no, I take that back. Uh, we'll say 2024 based on speculation. 
Well, we know we have the greatest quarterback since, you know, <laughs> slice presents. Well, I could tell you right now, the quarterback's an upgrade just because. Now I say a downgrade. What, now? Now is a downgrade. On quarterback? You, I will take Harris and Marv any day. Now, you talking about their, their 2008 season? That season, yes. Over. Because yeah, we to Corey Harris, right? We if we want to just look forward, right? Um, uh, what's our the the white guy? What's his name? Um, uh, Emery, right? Emery oh, was a yeah, the one a, Yeah, he was just. I think I think he's a good quarterback, but what we've seen from him was just completely average to. Max average, right? He was just dink and dunk here. He, he was par for the course for a true freshman, right? Um, uh, um, Jacory was, you know, he he's well, I, okay. Oh. Okay, I, let, let, I'm a, I'm gonna go on record. Okay, I'm gonna go on record. Videotape, audio. I'm gonna say it. Jacory Harris, as a true freshman. In my opinion, was light years ahead of Emory. Yep. Emory as a true freshman. Correct. Uh, of course, I don't remember seeing Marv. No, no, no. Don't date. Don't say Marv. No, say Harris. I don't remember seeing Jacory Harris throwing 18 to 30 wide receiver screens in a game either. That's true. <laughs> Also, Emory went to Florida State, went to Dope Campbell. You know, Marv went to Dope. Gainesville. Yeah, went to Gainesville, yes. Gainesville. Mm-hmm. Against the the national the, champion. The eventually national championship team. Mm-hmm. And held his own. Yep. He may he may not have been Heisman numbers, but he held his own. That yep. team held their own. Mm-hmm. You know. Oh, uh, you know. Okay, let me. Let me I would. I, I, okay, I. I would have to say upgrade this team. I don't because I don't know who Cam Ward is. I'm that, not. Gonna, that's what I'm I, talking about. That's I, what I'm, I'm talking not going to be like these other guys. Cam Ward is the greatest thing to slice bread. I don't know who he is. Okay, right? let me refresh my memory, Cuban. TVD had how many interceptions in 2023? I think uh, I forgot. Was it like? 13, 14. It was in the teens. It was in the teens. Well, Marv only had 13. But he was a true freshman. He was a true freshman, and plus they were all spread out. They weren't just after. He didn't go 4 0, come in at, after a bye week. You know, but anyway, I, I digress. Okay, let, let's let's play the game. Okay, so we're at quarterback, right? Yep. I really do not want to answer the question based on what of what's to come. Uh, yeah, twelve interceptions, by the way. DVD. Okay, so Marv only had, Marv had thirteen. So you taking a junior versus workforce? How you doing, dude? Uh as far as this year goes. I'm going to have to say the quarterback, regardless of who it is, is going to be an upgrade because of the fact that Cam Ward has more playing experience at the Division One level than Marv and Harris had coming in. That's the only reason why I'm going to say it. Okay. Next position, running backs. Downgrade. This year? Yeah. We don't know who the running backs are. And they all get hurt. And they all get hurt. And Greg Cooper was a beast. He was a workhorse, dude. Yeah. Katie. Hello, Katie. How you doing? It's okay. You haven't missed nothing but a bunch of me just rambling. Ten for Katie. Ten ten for Katie. And workhorse. (laughs) Yeah, y'all come in at the best time because everything else has just been blah, 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 interception, blah, blah, touchdown, blah, 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 loss, blah, 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 blah. It, 
it's just been I told y'all at the onset of this it's not going to be entertaining it's just going to be a bunch of numbers and but anyway uh running back good question it's an upgrade Greg Cooper I'll take Greg Cooper over anything oh, we have now oh Mo, I was gonna say yeah and and you're right as far as this year goes I'm gonna say are we are we saying I'm going to say that the running backs in 08 was an upgrade just because yep. of Cooper. And just imagine if James would have been healthy. Yep. If yep. he'd have been healthy, oh, my gosh, that would have been. But anyway, I'm going to say running back upgrade. Okay. Receivers, this is a tough one. I would have well, to say upgrade this year. Well, here's the thing. Here's what I'm thinking. So going through all these games, everybody basically got a touch of the ball. Everybody got a catch. There wasn't just one person being. Oh, uh, actually, utilized. let me let me uh, take that back because we had Travis Benjamin, Leonard yeah. Hankerson, Sam Shields. Let's see. Let me so the question is. Are any of these guys going to be better than Travis Benjamin? But they didn't put up any numbers. I'm looking here. Our receivers were not that good. I have to say, yeah. Well, yeah. it's not. It's not just that. It's just the fact that none of the receivers were util, were utilized yeah, like they were them, in 08. Nobody went over 500 and. Restrepo is going to go over 500 yards. I mean, here here's the wide receivers according to the roster of the 08 God. You had three. You had Travis Benjamin, freshman. Leron Bird, freshman. Theron Collier, freshman. Aldarius Johnson, freshman. Davon Johnson, freshman. Jermaine McKenzie, freshman. Streeter, freshman. Kendall Tompkins, freshman. Uh, Farkinson, senior. Hankerson. He had the dropsies, but he was a sophomore. Khalil Jones, senior. Sam Shields was a junior. You know, that. <sighs> but, you know, JoJo, he just been here for, you know, less than two days. And um, we're saying he's going to be the greatest receiver since Andre Johnson, you know. But, but my thing is, Cuban, is – Due to the, the the play calling, we didn't see anybody on the field but Restrepo. Maybe a something, maybe to George a little bit, but if you remember when we were going through the 08 season, everybody you had like five or six receivers with 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 catches. Yep. It was spread out. Everybody got a catch. You know? And You know, I mean, you just think about it. You think, okay, all right. You just look at, okay, these are the freshmen. You take Travis Benjamin, LeBron Bird, Collier, Aldarius Johnson, those four guys right there. Would you take those four guys over any four guys we have on the team right now? I want Travis Benjamin over anybody we have right now. Exactly. Well, Travis Benjamin and Jacoby George are – I like those two. I really like Jacoby George, but I'll give me Travis Benjamin over any – Travis Benjamin and, and Leonard Hankerson over anybody we have right now. Right. Exactly. But Again, this know, is – now, for those of y'all out there in the chat or in the back row, I'm not saying that the receivers this year aren't worth a flip. I'm not saying that. I'm not – I'm just saying – if we had to pick one, I mean, I'm going to say the receivers from 08 was an upgrade from what we have now. Yeah, just my I, I, my thing is we have Restrepo and Jacoby George. Right. And I would have to take those two over anybody. Yeah, I'm going back. I have to, I have to say our current receivers are better because of Jacob, because of Xavier. I know everybody. Well, I would address that, but what well, I don't want to give that person any attention about um, Restrepo. But you know, 
Yeah. Rest, I would Restrepo and Jacoby are they they've been productive, right? And Restrepo right, has right, been right. productive since he was a freshman. So I I would have to go this year we have an upgrade. Cuz none of these guys at the time were it's difficult because you're comparing freshmen to juniors slash seniors, right? Right. And that's why I'm saying it it's not to me it's not a talent level as much as we seen these guys in 08, all of them get a catch. They all were able to catch it and do whatever. But unfortunately, this past year, you know, Restrepo got something. Um, and they even used the tight end back in, in which the tight ends would be an upgrade from 08. Yeah, we're just, to now. Yeah, but, you're just going to skip that. You know, and, and honestly, the receivers, honestly, you could flip a coin, okay? But. I like the 08 receivers just because everybody got the ball. That's all. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, I'm gonna go with our current roster. We'll disagree. We'll agree to disagree. I mean that. Like I said, that's a that's a. a it could go either way. You're not. It, it's there's no right or wrong answer. Right. Tight end. We're just completely gonna skip. Yeah. You there's there's no need even talking about skip. tight end. No more t- yeah. <laughs> Offensive line. This is an interesting one. Okay, offensive line. All right. Um, I say downgrade this year. Yeah, because you had AJ Trump. I don't like the last name, but whatever. He was okay. He was good. Jason I mean, Fox had... was good. Orlando Frank. <laughs> Jason Fox and Orlando Fox, Franklin yes. were NFL players. Yes. Joel Figueroa was an NFL player. Reggie Youngblood yes. was an NFL player. Yes. Um, you have to say, and, and again, and on this line. Our current line, I see Max one NFL player. Right. And that's Mari Goa. Right. Here we already have one, two, three guys that played in the NFL. Right. And then plus with the uh O line and O eight, they all there was no NIL. There was no NIL. See what I'm saying? Uh, there was no nephew yet. I think nephew was still in the cradle. Line, well, right? but there but... was a son in this in two thousand and eight. Xavier Shannon was Randy Shannon's son. You're right. You're right. You're right. But still. No, no nephew, but we had a son. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but see, and that's just it. Uh, I, I, I'm going to say, I'm going to go ahead and say that the 08 was an upgrade just because of experience. Oh, uh, and that 2023, I mean, you have, you have Mal Goa on there, but, and then everybody else was from other places. This is, again, this is my problem, right? Um, this is my problem with the previous coach. He was a linebacker's coach, and this coach is an offensive line coach. Right. And... Our talent, you know, everybody keeps saying that, you know, we have a great offensive line. I'm like, our talent is really not there. You guys, I keep getting told that we have a top offensive line coach, a top offensive line. And, you know, Miami is measured of how many players go to the league. There's only one NFL offensive lineman there, maybe, in Maui Goal, right? So, because he can't deal with speed rushers. So, hmm. Well, I mean, and again, he's a true – he was playing high school ball. You know, he, he's a true freshman. So, I mean – Yeah, as a true freshman, you're supposed to keep up with speed rush, not bully rush, right? He was he, – Right. He was right. able to keep you know, up with the bullies, but not the speed. And, and when you get to the right, NFL, right. it's nothing but speed. So, oh, yeah. again, but again I'll, he, I'll, I'll let the Canes creator say that this offensive line is great. And I'm like – you know, I'll go, I'll, I'll, I'm sorry, going back to Shad, I know I'm jumping all over the place, right? With the whole three people rushing, right? Um, yeah. I'm like, did you see how many people are blocking, right? And then there was another play where I forgot, I think it was Rizzy that showed um, Restrepo blocking out. And, and I got killed for it. And I'm like, you guys think Mirabal is a great coach? And I'm like, he's not. He was doing max protect this whole effing year. So I don't want to hear it because if you look at his year, you know, it's like everybody forgets how horrible that line was his first year he was here. And I don't judge you when you are doing when you have 
the best of the best talent. I judge you when you have mediocre to be low level talent and see how you what you can do with those guys. Right. So, right. 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 And, sorry for yeah, being long winded. No, no, no. It's it's quite all right. It's quite all right. Ah, uh, but one thing I'll add on this max protect thing is. If you're going to max protect, won't you just bring in two tight ends and stop wasting Restrepo's time? Because, <laughs> you know, I, anyway, I, I don't get it. I don't get it. So we're going to say, what, 08? I'm saying 08 offensive line was an upgrade. Right. What's our next item up for bid? Defensive line. Oof. That well, I mean, again, I think we talked about this last time, but you know, we had those injuries, and of course, you know, defensive line, you had NIL transfer portal, not NIL, but you had transfer portal people come in. Uh, these cats on 08 were, you know, part of the farm system. <coughs> Excuse me. I mean, because that damn. He still had uh, Bailey, Alan Bailey, as a lineman, as a defensive end. But, man, I tell you. This... I got to go. Unfortunately, I guess, not unfortunately, this year I have to say upgrade. It's kind of tough because I'm looking at this after the fact, right? I'm not, right, I can't. Right, right, right. It's right, tough right, to look right. at it currently because if I were to say currently, I would say 2008 because of all the talent that they had but i'm looking at because you know uh, marcus forston was the number one d tackle in the nation um uh, uh Wule ojomo was a top recruit marcus regis right. was a top re recruit uh, i said marcus forston um dwayne hendrix from jersey he was a top recruit right so um alan bailey was a top recruit right so and these guys are actually playing so i'm like <laughs> Right, it's kind of tough to view it, I, because a lot of these guys were bust, <laughs> and it's right, right. But well, if if you had Cubans eye uh, back then, two thousand eight versus now, I would have to say two thousand eight defensive line was better. But knowing what it is, I have to go with two thousand twenty four is an upgrade. Yeah. I would probably agree with you because the defense, in my opinion, as a whole, just – it wasn't consistent. I mean, again, they did what they did to Florida at Florida. They did what they did to A&M at A&M. But Georgia Tech, North Carolina, uh, California, you know, I said Georgia Tech. You know, it just – they were kind of up and down. Now, again, again, I can't really blame that on, say, the talent of the defense. You know, I don't know what the, the game plan, the defensive game plan was. I don't know. Uh, and this is another frustration with this program that I have. Randy Shannon was a defensive guru, and our defense was oh, horrible. What? Yeah. And, and again, it's almost horrible. it's almost like the you know I, I look at at, at Shannon, kind of like it's kind of like the Manny situation. You know, when when Randy Shannon was a defensive coordinator, it was awesome. It was when awesome. Manny when Manny was a, a defensive coordinator, it was awesome. Yep, it really was. Consider it was good. It was good defenses. But I just I get the feeling that. Now we're I'm I'm only talking like you know second year into Shannon. I'm not talking the body of work of Shannon. Just the second year of head coaching. I just get the feeling that you know with Shannon and Diaz, I really think that Diaz should have went to the Temple and got some coaching experience. Yeah. Yeah. You know, just like with Shannon, I think Shannon probably should have either stayed defensive coordinator or went to a a Temple like. Uh, school, a smaller school to, to, to get your feet wet and, and you work your way up. You see where I'm getting at? I see where you're getting at, but let's talk realistically, right? I say, Jorn, you have two options. Um, 
You want the Temple job or the Miami job? What what you join oh, well, as yeah, a grown man to... with a family yeah. going to do? Right? Oh, you're, well, take, you're going to take and more, Miami. And what school is offering you two to three million dollars more? <laughs> Right. right, right. Oh, I, I agree with you. I mean, that's the that's the flip side of it. You know. Right. I mean? So it's, this is where I don't I don't blame the coaches. I blame the and this is my whole thing. I've been saying for the longest time, is the admin. This admin has been right. horrible. Like right. he should have not hired man. He should let him walk. And like, hey, go get some experience, and then if you're good, right. we'll hire you within whatever mm-hmm. three years mm-hmm. or whatever. Right. 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 But you know, we keep. You know, one thing that oh, that like, oh, they hired Manning in, in 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 within hours. Yeah, we hired Manning within hours, but we hired Mario less than a minute. We, yeah. <laughs> right, and like my whole yeah. problem with this damn program on the admin side is like we don't yep. take our time to vet the coach. Right, if we Mark right, did a great right. time, Mark did a did a great job, but we rushed that decision too. We should have. Ask oh, them like, yeah. any health issues or, you know, are you going to do this right. for a long run? And it's like, no, we right. want to rush every single hiring process. Like and we've sucked for so many years, guys. It's it's OK to take your time yeah. and hire them. Cool. Yeah. It doesn't matter. We get the, the temp and, choice. It doesn't matter. <laughs> take your damn time. You know, you know, we're only in 2008. We got a long way to go. We yeah. still got 15 more years. But my point is my 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 perspective is I'm not I'm not. Yeah, Shannon and Diaz would have been dumb not to take the Miami head coaching job. Okay, consider it. But I'm just thinking that imagine the coaches they could have been if they would have started at a smaller school and worked their way up because they both knew defenses, you know. But, again – you know, it is what it is. It was what it was. Okay, so we're saying that the defensive line upgrade this year is an upgrade this year. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. Just, just based, you know, the talent level. I mean, these yeah. guys were they had flashes at 08, but linebackers. Okay. Oh man, this is gonna. Be, I, we can't say a push here. No, I we really can't. want to say a push because of. You know, Sean Spence is one of the greatest linebackers that ever came through Miami. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Also but had it, Colin McCarthy that played good, right? Mm-hmm. This year we only have one. You know, even Katie said, Mar- "Well, the other Mary Goa, but we have Mary Goa, right?" Yeah. And I don't. Th- yeah. I think. So the question is, th- okay, this is the way I, have, I need to see it. <laughs> Could any of our current linebackers start back then? So would if Mary Goa started over Sean Spence, I say no. Would he started over Colin McCarthy? I say no. Ooh. Ooh, that that's a good question, Cuban. That that is a good question because uh, that wow, that's a good question. I I don't, I don't see look. any. So if you look at look at that rock, that, that the yeah, linebackers. I'm, look, I don't, I'm looking at it. I don't see that's... anybody starting over Arthur Brown, uh, Ramon Buchanan, Glenn Cook. Well, maybe yeah, Glenn Cook was not that good. Colin McCarthy well, and Sean Spence and Daryl Sharpton. Daryl Sharpton. That's what I was, was about good. to say. I was, I'm yeah, looking I at Sharpton. Sharpton. Now Spence was only a freshman in 08, so that tells you something. But Spence was a beast but, as a freshman. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking at, at McCarthy, Sharpton, uh, the Buchan, well, Atkins. I mean, it that was a complete unit. Yeah. And unfortunately, 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 nobody developed Arthur Brown. I'm My, not saying uh, I'm not saying he was going to be the next you know, Michael Barrow or whatever, but well, Michael Barrow was the head was the linebacker. I know, coach. I know that, I know that, but I'm just saying, you know, the Bermuda Triangle. Yeah. Oh, uh, but well, they were know, predicting there was going to be the Bermuda Triangle. Remember? Right, right. But it's like, again, it was, you know, if if, if Arthur could have bulked up a little bit. No, you know, he had good size. It's just I don't think he just so. This the. It, I know Shad, don't beat me up. I know Shad's gonna listen to the show. 
So Arthur Brown was from a little town in Nebraska, right? Was it Nebraska or Kansas? Yeah, it was, it Regardless, was it was in the flatlands. Yeah, it was in the flatlands. Then he comes down to Miami, and it's like, right. It's a little bit different, right? Oh um, yeah, 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 yeah. But you know, I, I I don't like saying that. Oh, Miami talent is different. But when you come from Nebraska to, to a, a to a Miami show. or Georgia, California, it's a little bit different, right? Yeah. The, yeah. You know, and it's just like culture fit wise. Also, you're going right, from right. You know, uh, cornfields to the beach, right? And it's like, oh, I need to adjust to this type of world, right? So, right, right, right. I just think he was a bad, I hate saying this word, I think he was a bad culture fit, right? Where he just oh, didn't I, I get agree. along in Miami. I agree. I mean, I think he probably should have stayed. He should have just, you know, I think he ended up at what, Kansas State? Yeah, he went back to Kansas State. I'm sorry, State. spoiler alert. I should have gave y'all a spoiler alert. I'm sorry, he's no, he was from Kansas. Oh, yeah, he was from Kansas and Nebraska. One so, of those two. I think it but was he, one. I mean, honestly, dude, I'll be honest with you. He probably would have, it would have probably been more beneficial to him to go to a Kansas State or Nebraska. Yeah. Yeah. He was from Kansas. Sorry, not Kansas. From not from, he was from Kansas. But anyway, yeah, I'm going to say, uh, Downgrade. I'm definitely going to say that the linebackers today are a downgrade to the 2008 cornerbacks. Oh man, this is uh, tough. this is a tough one. It is because <clears throat> Brandon Harris was pretty good his freshman year. Uh, Grant wasn't bad. Um. Demarcus Van Dyke, Nichols. DVD. DeMar yeah, DVD was there. You had Talamac was a freshman. A workforce, uh, that's who coached the linebackers. It was um, yeah. Burrow. No, then it was have, uh, uh, Then you got Randy Phillips was still there. Yeah, but he was a safety. We're just talking about corners right now. Okay, well, I don't – I have. I just chose defensive back, so I may be out speaking out of turn. Workforce, but, the answer is Michael Burrow. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Yeah, he asks uh who's the linebackers coach. And 08 was was Barrow, yes, yes, yes. I'm dude, I'm gonna tell you right now. You know, I've been very critical of the the Miami secondary, i.e. cornerbacks, defensive backs for a while now. And I'll I'll take 08 over I'll take 08 over the last few No, I'll years. take I'll take our current roster. Um Yeah, I'll take the current current roster. Okay. So we'll 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 we'll, uh, we'll push on that one. <laughs> yeah. Uh now I could tell you right now safeties I'm going to say 08 was an upgrade. Who was an 08? We don't have safeties now. That's a crazy part. Yeah, you're right. You're you're absolutely right. So I, I, this this is bad. <laughs> well, I will say. Well, no, I was going to say that 08 got ran over by those those running backs, but uh, you don't have safeties in that class. Well, but then again, nobody in 08 got burnt on that touchdown like Georgia Tech did this year either. Well, um, both guys are out of here, so it doesn't matter, right? Yeah, it doesn't matter anymore. Uh, man, it's, it's really hard to call, but I think just, just, just for the sake of, I'm just going to say 08 was a upgrade. Yikes. And then the final one, coaching. I got to give it a 08. It's not even close. Okay, coaching at co the 08 coaching staff was one of the greatest coaching staff we've ever, we okay, ever had. I'm, I'm, I'm going to stall. 
Let's see. Workforce says he handed in his DC. He's coaching LBs now at FSU. That's been his thing. DC or LBs coach slash GA. He had a hand in. Are you talking? About, you must be talking about Shannon. You talking about Shannon Workforce, or did I miss something? Uh, but who's? Oh, he says Randy got them up for big games, but he lost a bunch. He should have not have to. Okay, yeah, yeah. Has anything well, changed? <laughs> I mean, and 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 you know, this is this is this is this is the crazy part of all this is what workforce says, and I'm not I'm not sitting here saying you're white, right, right or wrong, workforce, but. You can say that for every coach since Coker left. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Oh. Uh, again, I'm not I'm I'm a, I am in no way putting Randy Shannon on a pedestal. I'm not doing that. But I'm more constant I'm 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 kind of trying to to emphasize the fact of all this, all this excitement and enthusiasm that that Miami fans have right now. We had it. We had it then. We've had it before. It's you know, that's why, you know, we get blamed for being non fans. But anyway, no. Oh, um, now again, in, in all fairness, you know. If we're going to, you know, compare the differences between 08 and this past year, I mean, first off, the thing that sticks out is, you know, Shannon basically had two brand new quarterbacks, two brand new quarterbacks. Okay. You know, you didn't have, you know, say a Jakari Brown, which played some a couple of years ago. Uh, had a little experience, you know, Emory, who played a couple of games. I mean, he went 8 for 23 against Clemson. He beat Clemson, you know, 8 for 23. Uh, and then it's just and, – and it's no disrespect to, to Jakari. It's no disrespect to Emory or TVD. Okay, I'm not trying to disrespect them, but – Marv basically had damn near the same numbers that TVD had. And TVD had already three years experience on the job. Marv had none. You see where I'm getting at? Oh. Uh, and and that, that that's all. I'm not trying to say one is better than the other or I'm I'm not saying that. I'm not I'm just saying I'm just keeping it real. You know, as the cool kids say, I'm keeping it a hundred. You know, uh, but it's just, again, this 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 is the re this is the reasoning and the explanation of the logic that say I have, in that, you know, I'm kind of pumping the brakes a little bit. You know, all this enthusiasm, this excitement. I'm not going to even. I'm not going to get into the. The standard ten win. I'm not getting into that. I'm just talking about all this hype. Oh, uh, you know, yeah. I'm excited to see what's going to happen. But I remember the excitement of '08. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. All right. Especially so, after the Florida game. Yeah. We'll see. Oh, ooh, I just had a thought, Cuban. Had a thought. Shoot. The OC in 08 was Nix. Patrick mm -hmm. Nix, which was uh, Bo Nix's pappy. Yep. He be that baby's pappy. Oh, no. But I just thought, hmm, how interesting would it be to be able to compare – this 2024 Florida game to say the 08 Florida game. Oh, 
Well, it's not even close because this Florida team is not a national I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> right? I but know. If I we know. lose to this Florida game, if we get that's, more... that's it. If, 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 if this Miami team loses to this Florida, it, dep- it depends on how they lose. But I'm just saying. No, no, no. If... I don't want to hear that shit. I'm sorry to cuss <laughs> but I don't want to hear that shit. We're not playing against the national championship Florida right. Gators team. So I don't want to hear if, if we lose the game by one point, I'm not. Listen, okay. The two this 2008, a bunch of freshmen went to Gainesville at night, and the score was nine to two in the fourth quarter. With a not nine, nine to three, uh, no, it was nine three, sorry, nine three in the fourth quarter. I'm not trying to hear, oh, but we played them close. Uh, the referees, this, um, you know, the, the, the crowd was, I'm not trying to hear none of these, like Shad has said. There is an expectation, right? This Florida right. team is not going to win no more than five games this year, right? So have you seen their schedule? Their schedule is very – they have the toughest schedule probably ever. Forget in the nation. They probably have the toughest schedule ever created on the face of the earth. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what. Let me let me retract my statement because you're absolutely right. There's no emotional victories. I'll just – I'm going to come out and say this. If – if Miami loses to Florida, that's that's it. That that's ball game. That that's it. I mean, if there are coaching blunders, if the quarterback play isn't there, then you know, Katie bar the door. No no pun intended, Katie. But it it's going to get ugly, dude. I mean, it. <laughs> you think things are messed up now? Jorn, let let no, let Miami go and lose to Florida in a few months. Well, Jorn, I'm I I, I I'm not I'm the the Cuban uh, uh, you know, don't call me a predictor, but I I'm, I can already see it. Right, if we lose this game, you guys are being unreasonable because this is our first game and it's on the road, <laughs> right. Come on, guys. What do you expect? Our players, <laughs> our players were not healthy in the spring. They just got here. You got to give it time to gel. You guys are expecting too much out of this. Like you got to remember, we had this program that had a horrible culture three years ago. We're still fixing it, right? I'm just telling you. I already know the answers already, right? That it's gonna happen if we lose. It's like, hey, man, we played at Gainesville. It was a close game. It was a night game. You know, the crowd was crazy. This is Cam Ward's first year as a quarterback at Miami. What do you expect, guys? I'm just telling you how what it is. <laughs> well, you know, maybe if let's 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 just let's just say it uh, hypothetically say it happens and they talk about the you know, the camp. I said, well, maybe he shouldn't have spent all his time on the beach playing with the, his friends from out of town. I don't I'm just saying, but well, and one more thing, I, well, I see something that workforce said. Last time we played at Florida, it was a neutral game with a whole bunch with, um, um, not Randy Shannon with um Manny Diaz. It was his first year with a freshman quarterback and a two hundred pound left left tackle, and we almost won that game if you know we could have drove the fourth. Oh quarter. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I mean, and we were winning that with, game even with all the dysfunctional and 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 turnovers and miscues Miami Jeff Thomas had, fumbling the ball on, on, on the punt you know yeah I mean I mean anything that could have went wrong went wrong went for wrong. Miami but they still had the, the chance drive. to win it last again drive. not 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 an emotional moral victory I'm just saying with everything that went wrong with Miami and they still had opportunities to win that game yeah, so I don't, I do not want to hear any. Ex- We're going to hear the excuses. I, I, I build them up for you already. So just, just get ready for that. Oh yeah, you know. Okay, we were talking about coaches, right? <laughs> yeah, we're talking about coaches. Yes. Oh. Uh, oh yeah, give me that 08. Give me that 08 staff. I'll yeah, give me the 08. 08 give me that 08 staff of money. This yeah. team is a national championship team. The only thing is. They didn't have they didn't have indoor yeah this is I'm I'm no, I'm, I'm, no, I'm no. sad right now no no they they give me give me Owe give me Owe because I was about to say Knicks but I'm like no give me give me Owe give me Owe I'll take Owe one second.
no no if ands or buts i take 08 what else is that all okay. for the upgrade, so upgrade? Look at, i i got a new name oh um, you see my new name now fake shit. <laughs> so i'm fake i'm fake shad right so i'm doing my my my, my shad thing if you give the 08 <laughs> team a indoor facility all these you know all these amenities the the the, the training this that 08 staff would have a national championship team well not not only that not only that uh fake shed but you just take all the conveniences that the team today in the last well no i take it back you know what kind of coach we could have got for eight million dollars a year back in 08 nick saban nick saban oh six nick saban yeah, because he was just right down the road at the Dolphins then, wasn't yeah. he? Yeah. He really wouldn't have had to have moved. Yeah, but we have again, people keep forgetting is like we have we just have a bad um we the problem with this program is the administration is just just horrible. Because I can tell you right now, you know, refamiliarizing myself with these young men who played Back in early 2000, now we're getting close to, you know, mid 2000, late 2000. You know, I've, I'm, I've been re- reminded of how talented these young men were. You know, and, you know, talent was never an issue. Now, granted, uh, It was some pretty spotty quarterback play, but still, overall, you know, you take, yeah, QB says we could have had Jimbo for that money, but I don't know about that. Oh, you know, I play the, let's play the interchange game, okay? Let's take the 08 team and put it into last year in 2023 complete swap do you think do you think that 08 team playing today could have beat Georgia Tech North Carolina Georgia Tech today? yes North Carolina oh, fuck I can't I think they would I real I honestly and what I mean is I believe that I th- I think the Miami defense of 08 would have shut down that offense of North Carolina last year. And then I will say that that Georgia Tech game, the knee game, elbow gate game, oh the 08 defense would have beat that would have shut them, but they wouldn't have scored but maybe 7 points. If that you know, because let's think about it. that 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 uh that Georgia Tech team from twenty twenty three was nowhere near the caliber and talent of that 08 Georgia Tech team. There was no there was no Dwyer, no Nesbitt. Man, that defense would have gang raped that 08 defense would have gang raped Georgia Tech from twenty twenty three. You would have had to worry about taking a knee. Does the 08 did the 08 team beat Texas A and M? Yep. I don't think so. I say no. You don't think so? Nope. I, 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 because that, because in order to beat Texas, and never had to put up a lot of points. That team was not putting up a lot of points. That that OA team was not an offensive. Right, right. But I'm juggernaut. saying if you take if you take the OA team, offense, defense, lock, stock, and barrel, that's, and you that's funny transport like, them to 2023. Even even with with Harris and Marr, I still think they would beat the twenty twenty three Georgia Tech team uh, I, I and have a new, the North Carolina. I have a new segment. This is going to be a tough one. Take the two thousand and three team okay. against the two thousand and eight schedule. Give me the wins or losses. 
Okay, hang on. What, what what was that again? The 2023? 23 team, yeah, or last year team. Last year's team. Okay, hang on. Playing on. against the 2008 roster. Oh, so the we, Ross. Oh, so basically you're no, playing. No, not sorry, not the roster, the schedule. The schedule. Okay, because I was trying to bring the schedule up. No, no, you got it right. You got it right. Okay, I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take uh let me take the names down. We all know who we are. Right. Okay. So basically, I hope everybody can see that schedule pretty good on that screen. Uh, yeah, you should make it main screen. Make it make your face the biggest one. There you go. Perfect. Okay, as long as you're I, – I didn't want to be rude and just move you out the way That's since fine. you are Cuban now. Okay. All right, so take the 2023 team, last year's team, and to have play them this play schedule. This, this schedule here. Well, I can tell you right now, they um, – I know I'm jumping ahead, but – they are. They were not going to beat that Georgia Tech team or that. Well, we're not going to take the bowl game, but they weren't going to beat that Georgia Tech team. Team. Oh, um, I see. Charleston, Charleston Southern. That's a win. That's a win. Florida. Nah, Wrong. they got beat by Florida. At A&M, Texas A&M. That. That would have been a toss up. I think it could have been an either way. <clears throat> we would have lost a North Carolina game because yes. Butch Davis has the mental. We would have lost to a Bobby Biden, Jimbo Fisher offensive uh, Florida State well, team. Again, I mean, with Ponder scrambling, that would have, yeah. Would have beat UCF. Would have yeah. beat Duke. Yeah. Would have beat Wake Forest. Yeah. Would have beat Virginia. Maybe. Yeah, I, I say <laughs> that would that would be a close one, but just because of the fact Virginia always plays us close. That's 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 the only reason why I'm saying that. We would have lost to Virginia Tech. We would have lost yeah. to Georgia Tech. NC State. Russell Wilson may have lit that secondary up. Yeah. Wow. So you're kind of looking at the same schedule, same record. Yeah. Wow. And I, I could tell you right now, nobody was stopping best at California. Yeah, nobody was stopping that, best. That 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 no, that wasn't it. So I mean, yeah, you base I mean, you may you may move some wins around, some losses around, but in all essence, same result. it's basically the same thing. Wow, that's crazy. It I is. did not mean to do that. <laughs> that was well, was... well, no, no, no. I mean, it's it's a it's a it's a good it's it's a good good uh good topic, a good good thing to talk about because, and it, and it's not so much a knock on the on the twenty twenty three team, but it's almost like the competition back then. All right now, let's you do the opposite. Yeah, let's flip the schedule now. Now do the two thousand and twenty three schedule. Oh dear Lord! Now you gonna make me work. Sorry, yeah, that's what I that's do okay. here. I give, I give, try to give good content. You do, you do a fine job. You keep me on my toes. Uh, I had a comment, right. but I don't know. So, I should give. all right, give me just a second. Give me just a second. Give me a second. I'll pull this. Well, shoot. Here we go. Where are you at? Give me just – I'm getting there. Hang on. Be patient, patient, patient. So we're going to do 2023, right? Yes. Schedule. All right. So let me do, – do, 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 do. let me bring – there it is. All right. Where's my thing at? There you go. Here we go. All right. So there we are. That is the... Hey, let me bring this back over here. I guess Shad must be either sound asleep or holding the baby. I figured he'd have been here tonight. All right. So we're looking at putting the 08 team against... 
this schedule? 2023 schedule. I the Miami of Ohio, I think I, I believe they win that game. Yep. I believe 08 wins it. Now the A and M game, the one that thing that concerns me about that game is the defensive line for A and M were pretty big. I don't know. I don't think we keep up with that A and M team. I don't think we do either. Uh, uh Bethune, Cookman, Temple. That's a win. Those are wins. I'm gonna say they beat Georgia Tech. I say beat Georgia Tech. North Carolina. I still I now dude, if you take away I mean, I know ifs and what ifs and stuff, but you know, looking at that game last year at North Carolina, between the 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 interception, no adjustments and the bad snap, you know, uh I, I I really think I think uh, I think Bill Young would have had a good defense plan for North Carolina. I really do. Yeah, I I uh, that would have been yeah, yeah. I mean, this could have been like a one point victory for Miami. I don't say Miami comes out and just blows the doors off of them, but I think I think Miami could could that O eight team could have. It's North Carolina, so I'm have to say a loss because you know how we are against North Carolina. And you know you would be absolutely right. I mean, you, that would yeah. be a fair bet. Yeah. Clemson, I would have say loss. We beat Virginia. We beat North whoa, Carolina. Whoa, 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 we whoa, beat whoa, whoa, Florida whoa, whoa, State. Whoa, whoa, we beat hold Louisville. Hold we beat up, Boston College. We beat Rutgers. Hold up, hold up, hold up. You're saying the 08 team couldn't have beat that Clemson team? No. We barely beat this Clemson team. I understand that, but we had Emory, 8 for 23. And we I'll had take, two I will. I will take Marv and Harris any day over because you're not going to have 18 screens thrown in that game. 20 yeah. wide receiver screen. I think that I don't see a scoring against that Clemson team. You know, this is this is interesting. Yep. Because part of my mind, part of my brain says you're right, Cuban, but the other part is I keep thinking of Emory. And then I think more. about that. Who was that? Was that was that Kobe that dropped that 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 first pass, that first drive pass that would have scored goodness. a touchdown? I th- I just don't think that Clemson team could have hang could have hung with the receivers Miami had, and they sure as hell couldn't have hung with 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 Cooper. And that yeah, but you got you're, you're you're also forgetting Marv and Jacory Harris were not. They were just. Not doing anything. Remember, they threw a lot of interceptions. There were games that there was one game that threw four interceptions. One game. I understand. I would go with Clemson, and but the, this is the crazy part. I would have oh, picked a tough one. I would have the rest of the schedule. I would have picked the 2018 to win the rest of the schedule. Oh, most definitely. I I agree with you. This this but you know this Clemson game is that's very interesting. Very. Very interesting. So the 2018 would have had three losses. My opinion. And that would have been Texas A&M, North Carolina, and Clemson. You know, okay. Uh, the do, do, I, I kind of got occupied with the schedule i lost track of the chat but uh workforce says unc would have mopped the floor with the 08 team katie says oh we made up for it with jimbo light uh qb says 08 not beating a&m qb says i'll take dawson over nicks well and, and and you know and that's a fair that's a fair that's a fair statement qb the only thing is I don't know if we've seen – have we seen the best of Dawson or have we seen the best of Dawson? You see where I'm getting at? I don't know. Now, I'm not saying Nix was great. No, I'm not saying that. But uh, And then QB says he'll take Gidry over Young. Now, imagine Gidry with this 08 defense. No, I, I got to go with Bill Young. 
And, you know, Young did too much zone. Okay, which Clemson team had thunder and lightning, Katie asked? Or is that with the uh... – I forgot. That was with Spiller and somebody else. Oh, shoot. And that was with Spiller. Says, thinks it was like 2006. But anyway, I mean, again, this is just this is just for fun. We're not trying to, but you know that is that is a good question. I, I that, and you know, my 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 thought I just had before I started reading the comments is I hope, I hope that this alleged new NCAA twenty four or whatever it's going to call it, I hope there's a, 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 a an opportunity to do stuff like this. No, they then I no, no. I know. I just I like to hope they do, but I'm just saying. Oh, uh, as me now, as a would, person building an app slash website, right? Help well helping that building. I'm helping the ability as a an individual doing it versus a company that is owned by stock um, people. It's no, they're not going to do this. It's um. Uh, well, I mean, even if there was, even if there was like a. Uh, an add-on you could get, you know, you could pay like, say, fourteen ninety-nine for the complete Miami history teams, or that'd be cool. It don't have to have names. That's called having a, a, a computer, yeah. a PC game where you can mod yeah. it. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm just saying that would be cool though. Oh, uh, but you know, honestly, Cuban, I I really. I I have to say whether you put 08 into 23 or 23 into 08 I think you still going to get the same results. I don't think so. I think 08 would have had the better record against this schedule. We lose 3 games and this year we lost what 6 games? Yeah, you're right cuz I mean I'm sitting here thinking about Clemson and you started ranting off about the last ones and you think that we're saying that the uh, the 08 team would have won the last one, two, three, four, five, six would be Virginia, games. North Carolina State, Florida State, Louisville, Boston College, and Rutgers. They would have won all those games. Well, I, I, I mean, do you think do you think Rutgers – do you think that running attack of Rutgers would have compared to uh, California and Javid Best? Well, this is the thing. If we would have won those games, we would have never played uh, – Rutgers, but since they're on the schedule, uh, we yeah. would have beat Rutgers because at least they had the ability to Javid Betts. They had, they had the ability to pass the ball. This this Rutgers team was very one dimensional. Well, um, and also, and also, in all fairness, the oh, the you know, damn near half the uh, twenty three team wasn't playing in that pinstripe bowl, bowl game anyway. Yeah. But I mean, I mean, it, it's 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 good conversation. But you know, I won't I won't disagree with those those last six games. I think, and even with Florida State, I, I think the 08 would have took care of that team easy. Yeah, I agree. Easy, easy. you know, uh, Louisville wouldn't even be close. Would not have been close. The NC State game would not, not close. have been close. Yep. You know, and of course, you know, Boston College wasn't worth a flip. But and yeah, with the uh the the Rutgers game, yeah, I think that that 08 team would have shut that team down quickly because uh Rutgers just took advantage of a uh unmanned, I should say, unmanned defense. I don't know, but yeah, I think uh I think that 08 team would have would have would have what lost three games? Would have gone nine and three. Yep. Ten and three. Yep. Which we did next year, right? In two thousand and nine. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Okay, if you don't want to know what happens in the next season, hit mute. Turn your TV off. Whatever. Step away. Uh, oh nine goes nine and four, I believe. Let's nine double and check four. That. Yeah. Let's double check that right quick. Yeah, nine and four, five and three in conference, and they won the champ sports bowl. Hey, no, we lost. Oh, that does say L, doesn't it? I'm sorry. <laughs> no, we lost. Oh my god! 
That's a Greg right? Cooper game where he blew his knee up. Yeah, I mean, I, I, reading is fundamental. So yeah, I mean that's that's you know Randy Shannon again. I'm not trying to compare. I'm just telling you what's out there. So in Randy Shannon's second year, goes from five and seven to seven and six and goes to a bowl game just like Mario did. Uh the third year, Shannon goes nine and four. Okay, well, pause one second. So Shannon won ninety games his third year. Yep. I wish Shad, you know, I could go back to being a fake Shad, but I wish Shad was on this show to ask him, hey, Shannon, his third year went nine and nine and four. So with eight million dollar coach, right? And a million dollar quarterback. Million dollar quarterback and a, and a three million dollar or two million dollar DC. Uh-huh. 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 <laughs> Well, Man. I mean, again, let, I mean, let's let's put it in perspective. I mean, you know, if that 09 team had an eight million dollar coach, a million dollar quarterback, I know there was no no NIL back then, but let's just say, you know, and you know, you had that. What did you say? Is it two two million dollar DC? Two million dollar DC. Two million. Now this this 09 team got as high as number eight. In the AP poll, according to this, they started out the season unranked, but end up working their way up to number eight. Finished at number nineteen. Hmm, wonder what could have happened. Man, could you? Okay, again, I'm just playing the game of what if. Okay, just the game of what if. Because, you know, trends have been set and they're still being followed today. But imagine, if you will, 2024, Miami gets up to number eight in the country. But finish number 19. That's a, what, would be, what would be the excuses? Well, the excuse, at least we finished above uh, in the top 25. When was the last time we finished in the uh, top 25? You know, I, and, and again, I mean, it, you know, if you think about it, if you get, in all honesty, you take Cam Ward out the picture, or you just take out that million-dollar quarterback, regardless of who it is, and you just go with what we got, no disrespect to Jakari or Emory or anybody, but you just go tit for tat, Okay. Do you think the 2023 Miami team, or 2024, excuse me, would match that 09 team by going 9 and 4, hitting the API, AP high ranking of 8? Does that make sense? That makes sense. That makes sense. Um... I mean, because you got two coaches. In their third year, they basically matched each other the first two years. You know, everything's everything's been kind of tit for tat so far. Now, Katie has a good point. Bought the team versus built the team. I'm just saying get rid of – just take Cam Ward, take the million-dollar quarterback out the equation. Well, this is, the, this is my whole debate. You know, that's a great thing that what, what Katie said, bought versus mm -hmm. built, right? Right. And right, this right. team had the opportunity to be, be built, but Mario decided to buy the team with all these dumb transfers. And it's like, it, it's one of those debates that, you know, people are saying, oh, that this program had a bad culture, so on and so <laughs> forth. And the coaches knew, I'm like, if the coaches knew, why did it keep continuously? You know, just bring in transfer it's, players and keep. It's like if, if know, it was that bad, you'd have just dis destroyed the program and rebuild it from scratch. You would have had nothing but freshmen playing versus having these you, vets. You know, I've come to a con a realization, Cube, and I was thinking about this the other day. And how many times have we heard the culture is the problem? How many, How long have we heard that? When we lose. <laughs> and for how long have we heard the culture is the problem? The culture has to um, change. Since um, Al Golden. 
Al Golden's the one that started it. And I and I agree. In other words, the point of the question is, you know, culture is an intangible thing. It's not it's not players, it's not coaches, it's not facilities. You see what I'm getting at? And it seems to me that culture is kind of an umbrella excuse. In other words, yep. to avoid addressing the real the real issues, i.e. this is for Katie, coaching decisions, coaching ineptness, uh, coaching blunders, you know, in order to, to just kind of glaze over that, we'll just put a layer of culture problems over it. You see where I'm getting at? You, you can't touch culture. You know, it's all, it, it, and that's all I'm saying. It's just, it just seems like, and I've, it's like, I, I'm with you, Q. It's like, it's been, culture has been the problem for every, <laughs> I mean, every time they lose or, you know, even back at the, back in 1990. It was a culture problem. You know, that's why they couldn't, you know, they, they couldn't win anything in 1990. Look at the way they acted in the Cotton Bowl in, in, in uh, 91. Yeah, it's a culture problem. You know, when when in fact, and then like, you know, again, it's just, it's, it's like it's a, it's the safe word. For the hype machine, culture. If you have nothing else to blame it on, if you can't, if you if if you have to blame it on anything that's going on with the team, cult, uh, administration, or coaching staff, no, it's the culture. Well, what 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 Katie said, the culture. What she said, the culture was pretty good under Rick. Under Rick would have sat some butts down. The thing is, what Rick did, he didn't do what all what golden manning and mario did blame it on other coaches rick said the um kai is my quarterback you know i don't like him that much but he's my quarterback you know right we're right, gonna right. take this team and we're i need faster players and he but he didn't say golden did a bad job and the culture was bad he's like screw all that we're just gonna you know get it here work and and just go he didn't have excuses. So when I hear that culture, when when a coach starts saying there is a culture problem, it's like, no, you have excuses. You're building in excuses already. Right. Yeah. And it's like yeah. if you're a coach that don't that doesn't say that, it's like you're you don't care. You're you're going in without making any excuses. So that's well, what when, when Brick came in, he came in with no excuses. Like, you know, right. we have slow guys, we're gonna get faster guys. I don't right. like uh, Kaya because whatever, but we're still going to win nine games. And next year, right. we're winning close games, but we're winning 10 games, right? Then, uh, right, I'm right, tired. right, right. To oh. me, yeah, it just when a, somebody uses the word culture, it's like you're building an excuse for the fans to believe your BS. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, you know, it's like when we get to let's see when what let's see we got a couple more years. Two thousand eleven was Golden's first year, so I'm really, I'm really excited to where we get into the Golden years, because you know he had his his uh his his pillars and foundation for success and stuff, which we will get to go into uh, in depth in. I'm I'm real excited about getting into that. You know what I'm talking about. I know what you're talking about. He was yeah, oh, no, yeah. the culture was bad. Uh, these guys are no. small, blah, 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 blah. Well, no, I mean, because I, I found, I actually found the video that Al Golden made at Miami when he had his, you know, his pillars of success, the five the pillars, pillars and all that, all that good stuff. I found that video. Oh, and yeah, yeah. I think I, I think it's on YouTube out there somewhere. I think, but anyway, I found it and, it, and I'm like, I had actually forgot about that. It had been, you know, I mean, it's been a while, but I kind of forgot about it. But I'm like, oh yeah, here we go. We're going to use this. This will be a teaching aid 
But yeah, oh, you know it. it uh, it, it's crazy. I mean, it, it's, you know, in the grand scheme of things, you know, in the grand scheme of things, they're really, other than some experience, there really isn't much between the 08 and the 2023, just some experience and some very interesting coaching decisions. Okay. Yeah. Oh. You know, honestly, you could you could do a blind taste test and you couldn't really tell the difference between 08 and 2023. You know, it, it, it could be I mean, there are differences. I'm not I'm not totally in it, but I'm just saying for the, the, the grand scheme of things, it's kind of. You know, the same thing. Which is scary as hell, but it's also fascinating. Yeah, you we know. just have to stop this 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 excuse. Yeah, we just got to stop this excuse making uh, as a program. Right. Oh, we most to, definitely. We just got to stop know, just, it. I just like enough, guys. Like enough with the, you know, enough with the excuses. It's just just it's very uh, annoying. Oh, let's see. Katie gave you a compliment. Cuban, you just hit the nail on the head. Mario came in here trashing everything about the team. That's why today I have zero respect for Mario. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's almost like it's it's kind of understood. It's the unwritten law of the land that when you're a new coach coming into a team, you know, things there there's going to be some baggage. I mean, it's just that's just how it is. But I mean, just come out and say, all right, well, we're going to try to, fit, you know, do this, do that. And, you know, don't just come and say, well, we got a culture problem. We've come in here to try to fix. And yeah, nah. it's it's that. I mean, I, I'm not I was going to trash one of the main Canes guys, but I was like, let me not do that. It's just because uh, he took a shot at me and I didn't appreciate that. But it's here nor there. Um, and it's like it's just. You see, the the these Canes creators are they're just backed by 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 the program, right? And it's like you're not well, yeah. being fair, you right? Know? And you know, and, and I'll be honest with you, if I was getting paid what they're getting paid, I'd probably say the same thing. Yeah, it's just the but, inconsistency. You know, it's just like, come on, guys, like let's let's be real, not realistic, but just, you guys are jokes. You know, it's like you killed one coach because he kicked you out of the damn program because you guys just. Or reporting bad things, but you love this coach because I don't know why. But you know, it's just uh, like I said, yeah, it's just very uh, annoying. Well, well, well. The thing is, you know, when when the school is paying this, you know, Mario eight million dollars a year, you know, they don't want any negativity. Yeah, y'all, y'all better here. Look, we'll spend eight million a year on the coach, but we're going to spend a million a year on you content creators. And you're gonna you're gonna sign this 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 waiver this this contract saying that, you know this this non disclosure clause or whatever they call it where, you know look you're not gonna say anything about anything but what we tell you to say, right. You know and then, ah, oh, the day a coach takes a job those guys are his that's my guys BS yep. was yeah exactly I think what it was was it ah oh, I think it was Shad and his. Spanish Inquisition the other night. Uh, poor Anthony. I still feel bad for him. Uh, I mean, Shad was in the zone that night. He wasn't taking no bullshit from nobody. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, you know, talking about, I think he had something about when the coach leaves, you know, the, the oh, draft, oh, yeah. people who, who get drafted. Or, who, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who players yeah. do they belong to? Do they belong to... Oh, uh, is it too? How long is it before it belongs to the new right, coach? Do right. they take credit for the old staff? Because everybody's like, "Oh, those are Mario guys that were going to uh, the NFL," but then the guys that went, you know, that are current, they're not Mario guys; they're Manny guys. And it's like, so what's? How does this work? <laughs> Explain. That's how all. That's all part of the narrative, dude. To where, in order f- to keep the to keep the morale up of the fans. 
you know, because not too many people are happy with Mario right now, okay? But to keep the illusion going, you know, kind of like Wizard of Oz, don't pay attention to the guy behind the curtain, you know, to keep the smoke and, and lightning and all this stuff fascinating the people, you got to, you know, just keep that stuff up. Even though Mario ain't been there for, what, two, three years now? Yeah. <laughs> You know, once once you leave the door and, and you get that final pay or, you know, once you leave the premises and accept another job, then you lose all rights to that to that that group of kids, you know, uh, because you don't know what the new regime has done to. To uh, help them out, you know, make them better. So I. <sighs> I don't know. I don't know. I just, you know, I really try to stay positive, but, and I know the more we get into this, the crazier it's going to be. Uh, and the more we get into this, the more we're going to see wash, rinse, and repeat. I know that, you know. Um, I don't know. It's... <sighs> Honestly, I I really I really just get tired of of having to talk about these these uh sunshine pushers, you know. Oh, uh, this this cat from inside the uh Kane's insight kind of creepy looking, but oh, uh, you know, stuff like I just just get tired of hearing it, man. Come on, bro. Y'all calm down. They've only been through what three or four spring practices right now. Yeah, and I just see the hype everywhere. Oh, this is I'm like, guys, like we're doing this again, huh? <laughs> like And 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 the and again, I know we're flogging a dead and we said this a thousand times, but it's like people flock to that like a bug to a light, a bug light. You know, a moth to the flame. It's oh my gosh, I don't get it. And then the same people that that flock to those snake oil salesmen will be the first ones who, you know, when something goes wrong, they'll be the first ones to say, well, we told y'all it wasn't, you know. I... <sighs> who cares? Who cares? Yeah, it's, it's, but, uh... you know, I will say, I don't know if Shad's going to make it this long, but then again, he'll be up all night. You know, one thing Shad said in his video this morning he actually he I think he led off with it and I really I really agree with it is when he was talking about the people that were the the cam people mm -hmm. okay and that if if cam succeeds you know you make sure you you know stay loud stay proud let them know you know we believe you know and then but if the opposite happens then Make sure you say you were wrong. I, I'm, I'm probably, I probably just totally dis, just destroyed what he said. But that's to me, that's what he basically was saying. You know, if you were wrong, say you were wrong. If you were right, say you were right. Correct. And you know that goes both ways. I'm just saying. Yeah. But anyway, uh, so yeah, that. That's basically 2008. Oh, uh, it wasn't anything special. I mean, Miami did finish seven and six uh, for the first time since 2006. <laughs> you know, uh, so just to quickly recap in O from O four to O eight, they went nine and three, nine and three, seven and six, five and seven, and now seven and six. And I hate to tell you this people, but Miami doesn't see uh 10 wins again for another nine, 10 years, you know, buckle up. Uh, it's just uh, basically from here and until 2017, it's all seven win, six win, nine win, eight win. It's 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 not going to be pretty. Not going to be pretty. 
to get there. And the sad game. thing is, it's going to be that way until we get to today. You know. So we're gonna. You're saying we're gonna have ten wins this year, huh? Well, with a million dollar quarterback and an eight million dollar coach and two million dollar assistant coaches, they damn well better hit ten wins. Now, if you take all that out the equation, I'm going to play the numbers and say nine wins. But again, if you you got a you got an eight like I said, eight million dollar coach, million dollar quarterback, which we have a million dollar quarterback. Uh, yeah, you know. Oh, uh, uh, let's see. Katie has some thoughts. I believe that Jakari's situation is 100% because Mario has built in prejudice against him, not his guy. I will not, I won't discourage, I won't disagree with that. That's why all those guys want to talk about is recruiting. It's like that's all it takes. Our blue chip ratio is tied with UF at number 14. FSU is nine. Compare the coaching and who comes out on top. <coughs> Well, to that first statement, Katie, uh, yeah, I mean, because Jakari came in with Manning. No, he did uh, not. He was recruited by Manning, but he didn't finish the year. Well, I'm not trying to say it's a man, but I'm just saying Mario, see, Jakari was here in 20... 22? No. No, he came in. His freshman year was with Mario, right? Yeah. It's just, man. Yeah, you're right. You're having, Okay, I had to stop and think for a second. I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh. Uh, People say I don't know Mike Keynes. I'm not a Keynes fan. So that's. I know. It's just all this stuff starts. It just starts melding together after a while. It's like all one big glump of glop. You know. Um. I see. I got you. I got you. I got you. But the thing is, if I mean, now, let, let, I know we 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 we're just wasting time. But imagine if Cam Ward didn't come to Miami and you had Jakari, Emory, and Judd. Could you imagine the conversations going on? You, you would. You would definitely have two groups of fans, for sure. But yeah, you're right, QB. That's that's that that thought. It, it finally that light bulb went off in my head. I apologize for my retardedness for a second there. Ah, uh, but you know, yeah, Katie. It's they want to talk about the recruiting, but the thing is, in this day and age, in my opinion, recruiting is important. But say like this, this recruiting class that Miami just got in, as talented as some of those guys are, how many of those guys are really going to be here by 2026, 20, 27? Um, what do you mean by, by, by <laughs> well, I, somebody had this great, I don't know who it was, but I think it was a uh, Kane sport. So our roster right now, we have like a hundred players, something like that, and we need to cut fifteen players, right? Right, and it's like, who do you cut? Because, so Jacory, I think, <laughs> let me look at what was two thousand and twenty-two, right? Mars first year, yeah. One second. But while you're looking that up, what I was getting at is. Of of all the recruits that come, and it don't have to be Miami. It could be anywhere. You know, with all the recruits come in, how many are going to actually stay there past year two Okay, before Ooh. they hit the transfer? Point? Watch That's this. all I'm saying. This is Mario's first class, right? The one that, oh, he came in and saved, okay? Okay. Cyrus Moss, gone. Uh, yep. Nigel Lee Kelly, does he stay or go? end of the spring you got to cut players you got to get down to 85 the 82 roster limit 
do you keep him or you tell him to go? I I'm gonna I'm gonna probably say go because it's not a Mario guy. Well, that this is his first class. Oh, that was his first class. This oh, his first I'm class. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah. right. You said that. <sighs> He'll probably leave. Um, Leo Skinner left. So yeah. so far, one out of the two, one out of the three have stayed. Chris Grades gone. Yeah, that's three players out of this class that are gone. Tavante Tav- Citizen. I hope he stays, but I, I, I real, I mean, we don't know because of his knee, right? Exactly, and I just don't know if he's gonna. I got a bad feeling he's going to get messed over because of his injury. Yep. And I think I could see him coming back home to Louisiana and maybe going to so either Louisiana Tech or something like that. A Tech, uh, maybe, maybe a Mac or maybe, or maybe even go over there to Houston or a I just, and with the, because with the talent coming in. Yep. So I, he might, uh, that's another one. Okay. Kamari Rogers out of the program. Yep. Wesley Bislink might be to might they might tell him we gotta go. We have too many linebackers. Hmm. Mark Keith Williams. Goodbye. You're too skinny. You're never gonna play here as a safety. Jacory Brown, he might never play here. Hey, Isaiah you know, Warren. I, go ahead. I was gonna say I, I, in the back of my mind, I keep I keep thinking, I, I, Jakari's going to be a sacrificial lamb. I hate to say it, as yep. much as I don't want that to happen, I want to. I would rather have seen Jakari get out there because if you paid attention to the pinstripe pole, that young man was making some throws. I agree with you. That I, I know you're not. I'm just I'm just yeah, I agree with giving you. my case. That I mean, Jakari was making throws that a quarterback who hadn't played all year shouldn't have been making right i mean it's Next. like he could have he could have it, you would have thought he'd played all year yeah you know the jacari's got the arm he has the he throws effortlessly yeah he's got to give he's got to let him play you got to let him exactly right you know I and i tell you right now i don't care i will take jacari over any other quarterback at Miami right now, I really will. I love Jacory, but I would, I would, I would go with Emory. I like Emory. I like his. I, for so, let me give you the reason why. The reason I'll pick Emory is because who this coach is, right? Emory is a conservative type of quarterback that fits what this program wants. Jacory and Cam Ward are not what Mario wants. It's what he needs to win, right? But he doesn't right, want right, right, that type right. of quarterback, right? I and I and I can agree with that. I mean, he's looking for one of those Big Ten quarterbacks. Exactly. There you go. So that's why I'm but, like, this program. But, it's Emory. I know, and and it, and the, see, and that's what pisses me the hell off, Cuban, because Jakari could be the one of the greats. Well, the thing you is, know, it, well, but for people, this is what I had to tell people. Majority of this roster was recruited for a spread offense. Jacory was recruited by Rhett Lashley, right? He wasn't recruited by a pro style quarterback, you know. So it's like that's the problem. It's like <laughs> a lot of the players that were here before were spread players, not pro style quarterback. Right. Every right. pro style right. quarterback. But you know. I, I watched, and this is no disrespect to anybody, but I, I watched I watched Emory against the Clemson. I watched Emory against the Florida State. And to me, in my opinion, he don't have near the arm strength that Jakari does. I think, and I, and, and Jakari doesn't even have to use his wheels. Jakari could just use his arm. And if, in my opinion, no disrespect, and I know I agree with what you're saying, Cuban. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to debate you or say or, or, or argue with you, but I'm just saying, you know, Jakari can be what Jakari 
never got a chance to be. Oh, Jakari could be what Kaya was never allowed to be. Jakari could be the best since Ken Dorsey. I'm yeah, just... but Jakari had no business playing. He had, once they fired Manny and Rhett Lassie took the SME job, he should have went to another school. No and business. you're right. I mean, you're right. You're right. I agree with you. I agree yeah. with you. But I, I just hate that because he's such a good young man. He seems like he's great. got a yeah, great, great head on his shoulder. Oh, the, the the folks who raised that young man did did a fantastic job. The, the young man knows what he wants to do, how he wants to do it, you know. And if, because I'm telling you right now, if, if we get to 2025 and Jakari leaves, the quarterback room has just digressed by 10 years. Well, you might as well have Kirby Freeman and Robert Marv behind Well, center. Jordan, I, I told you, you, we have to cut down to 85 players. I know. So I we're going to have what? Jakari, Emery, Poffenbarger, Ward, and the new guy. That's five quarterbacks. You cannot have five quarterbacks in your roster. You I have to show probably that. two to leave. Right, I think Poffenberger and Jacory are going to be told to leave. I, and you know, I, in a way, I agree with. I, I, I'm not going to argue that. I'm just, it's not that that's got me pissed off or frustrated. It's just the fact that, you know, you got. Again, this is just my opinion, but you got Jacory. All right. And, but yet, I mean, you got, I mean, you've already pushed it back a whole year with Jakari because this should have been Jakari's first year. But they decided, no, we got to bring Cam in here. Okay. So you've pushed Jakari back a year, which means he would only have, well, he had his, he would have two years left, one year left. Okay, so basically, by bringing Cam in, and I've just I've I've accepted this fact a while ago, but you know, you bring Cam back is basically you're basically telling Jakari you need to leave. You're pushing him out the door, which was wrong. Jakari should have been starting quarterback this year and next year, and he would have been. He could have he he, he would have he would have put some numbers up. I'm telling you, just my opinion. But no, they bring Cam in, which means you're putting the future in Mr. Eight for twenty three, who doesn't have the arm strength. Ah, uh, along with Judd, which we don't we don't know what he's like. And then you got this Poffenberger. All we know is he can dunk without a shirt. You know, uh, I don't. I don't agree. I'm. I'm just letting it all hang out. I, I'm just screw it. I'm letting it all hang out. I think bringing Poffenberger in here was dumb. Yep. He don't need to be here. He needs to be somewhere else. He needs, in other words, he his talent is needed somewhere else. You know, you've got, again, you got eight for twenty three who has yet to impress me. You know, oh, you got Judd coming in, and then you got the Nickelback dude coming, Luke Nickel. That's nice. That to every. Me. That everybody is hyping up as the next great thing since the wheel and sliced bread. When in fact, stop looking to next year. You got it. You got a quarterback right now. <laughs> and it's not costing you a million dollars. And the funny I'm just, part, I, 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 you know, because guess. it, I've, all right, I'm I'm really trying to stay calm, but it's really pissing me off because you see all this this rise of the fall stuff it brings back and it reminds me and refreshes my memory on you know 
it, it's it's this 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 quarterback situation has been it, it's been horrible. It's been mismanaged so bad or badly, whatever the correct way is. Well, Jordan, you're you're forgetting one thing. Next year, there's going to be a quarterback out there that's going to transfer, and there's going to be a new Cam Ward next year. So we're going to forget but, about Nickelback. Okay. Right? Well, then, okay. And not, I'm not. This is not a chew, but this is just added. The okay. Then if if we gonna if we're gonna bring in another quarterback, why are we still recruiting quarterbacks? I mean, my God, man, how many quarterbacks do you need? Because matter them. of fact, matter of fact, I'm I'm gonna do it. I I, I don't want to go into next week's show, but I'm gonna do it because of the fact 2009. Uh oh, hang on, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. 2009. There we go. Do you know who the quarterbacks are for 2009? Um, Ja'Cory Harris, Kaya? Nope. Ja'Cory Harris, and I'm not trying to cheat. I'm trying to see here. Ja'Cory. Oh, Stephen Morris. Nope. Wow. Stephen Morris. AJ Highsmith. AJ Highsmith. Now, I mean, they may have been on the roster, but the only ones who – well, I mean, you had like, uh, I think, Cannon and all them people, but the only – actually, Ja'Cory Harris is the only quarterback who really played all 13 games. High Smith had a little mop-up duty here and there, but hang on. Hold the damn fo- – I could tell you, I, I'm, I'm, I'm in the wrong – here we go. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I got the old nine guy sitting right here in front of me. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah, come on, get back up there. Give me the table of contents here. Ah, uh, shoot. <laughs> do 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 do. Two thousand nine. Where y'all at? Where y'all at? Page twenty-eight. Oh, and in two thousand nine, they play in Land Shark Stadium. By the way, come on, where you at? Oh crap! No, that's not what I wanted. That's the man. I'm so worked up, I can't even think straight right now. Cause um, this is the this is the shit that really pisses me off. I mean these these young people today ain't got a clue. They don't know why we're us old people are so frustrated. Why are y'all frustrated? Y'all just don't know. Y'all always gloom and doom. Yeah, I'm not talking about young people like Katie. I'm just I'm you know what I'm talking about. Okay, let's see here. Okay, that's alphabetical. That's the class breakdown position. Okay, here, I, I, I'm, you know, I'm going to share this. That way nobody thinks, that way anybody who else watches this thinks I'm, I'm not lying. I'm not making up stories to fit my narrative. All right, this is the 09. This is your quarterback room. Taylor Cook, Ja'Cory Harris, A.J. Highsmith. Matt Pirelli, Cannon Smith. Cannon Smith, son of the FX owner. Yep. I'm not so, a hurricane fan, by the way. I'm just a fake I know, hurricane I fan. Know, I know. But so, you know, you see what I'm talking about? You got your car. That's all you got. Yeah, yeah. Well, Taylor now, Cook now, was a two star quarterback, six seven. Yeah, I remember him. You know, Pirelli, he was just – He was a walk just in, Yeah, he was just in case. But what I'm getting at and is – And A.J. Highsmith was – he was a safety turn quarterback. That's right. Because we didn't have quarterbacks. That's right. So what, I, what I'm getting at is, you know, why do you need – I mean – it, it every day it, it just I keep I, I try to stay in denial, but I really need to stop. But I I, I see now that uh, 
I, I, you know, I could honestly see Jakari transferring in this next portal window. Window. Yeah. So let me finish the list. I really could. So let me Go finish ahead. the list. Next player, Isaiah Horn. If Isaiah Horn does not perform in the spring, they're going to say JoJo and um, the other guy from St. Thomas, the freshman, take over. So he might be even asked to exit yeah. the building. Jaden Harris. He mm. might be given, told to exit the building. Yeah. Matthew McCoy cannot start over Louis, Louis uh, uh, Cristobal's nephew. Oh, God, no. I, I can foresee uh, nephew starting next year. Yeah. So Matthew McCoy might be told you got to leave the program. Amon Moton does not play. Might be told to leave the program. Kobe Young left the program. Annette yeah. Cooper might go to the NFL. So this was the whole class. Out of this whole class, you might have one, two, three, three guys out of this whole class to stay. Yeah. And I so was again, a recruiter. And again, why why do we make why well, say we, but why do the, the 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 powers that be make such a big deal about recruiting? When in fact you're not going to keep any of them anyway. Yeah, I don't keep any of them anyway. You know, and and and, and God bless Chalupa. Chalupa's doing a fine. I, I mean, don't Chalupa like working that. his, he uh, working his ass off on those videos he makes. I mean, no comment. Whether you, whether you <laughs> like him or not, okay, he may not be everybody's cup of tea, but you got to give the young man credit. I mean, he puts a lot of work into those videos with the recruiting and stuff, and. Honestly, in this day and age, you know, it recruiting really doesn't matter that much. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Because you can, you know, it's almost like it's I think it's going to come to a point to where the the, the signing day is going to be like the NFL draft yeah, to where more, and and I'm looking know, yeah I'm looking at the transfers here. The transfer transfer. Uh Daryl Jackson, Daryl Jackson transferred. Caleb Johnson didn't do nothing. Akeem Mesidor keeps getting hurt. Jonathan yeah. Dennis does not play. Mitchell Goudier was a rotational player. Daryl Porter started. Lewis uh Logan Sagapolu does not play. Antonio Moultrie doesn't play. Henry Parrish will chase no player. Frank Ladson did nothing. Jake Lincolnstein did nothing. And I'm told this guy is a master ace recruiter, right? Okay. <laughs> All right. You guys keep telling me these lies about this. Okay. So so let me oh, – maybe I'm just really getting – maybe I'm really getting kind of pissy, but, you know, we visited the theory of – well, actually, I think you, you're the one who brought it up, Cuban, but – talking about if mario wins he's out yeah you know who's to say who's to say that he's not trying to get a quick fix to leave to leave ding you ding 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 you finally you got on to my little well, no, no, i mean that I'm you know, no what i'm saying is it kind of, i mean i i i complete i'm not going to i'm not i'm not going to disagree i'm not going to argue it's a very valid point it, it's it's got validity it's got legs but as you were talking about as we were talking about the recruits and you were talking about the transfers and this and that and people you know it it hit me of course you know you're Mr. Remodel or Rebuild but you know, it's it's really starting to look like Mario's not forming this team for the team's benefit. He's doing it for his own benefit. Does that make sense? In she other words, I say this. This is all Jordan. He removed his name because he said this. I did not say this. I mean, I'll I'll I mean, I'll say it. I don't. <laughs> I ain't got nothing to lose. I don't care. But I mean, think about it. Is he – because, you know, normally, normally your coaches, you would, you would, you know, bring these recruits in and you would cultivate them and incubate them and develop them and put some product on the field. But 
there's been a lot of transfer portal stuff like quick fix yeah and it's and, know, and, I, well, and I know we're the, well this is four hours i didn't know it was long but just just let's yeah. think about this right um what nick saban just said right mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. have to understand what i don't agree anything with nick saban said i i i you know i think players should get paid whatever amount of money but these coaches do not want to deal with this stuff look at the no. coach from boston college He's like, the hell with this? I'm leaving Boston College to be a defensive assistant in the NFL. Right. Chip Kelly said, I am leaving a D1 uh, program that's going to play in the Big Ten or whatever that uh, conference is to join to be a offensive coordinator at Ohio State. Like, right. people have to wake up. And, and, and what I was trying to say, Mario is not – you know, I don't think he's going to stay here uh, coaching kids that want to get paid all this money. So he's leaving, right. guys. If if he wins 10, 11, you know, or if he gets in the playoffs, he's out of here. Out of here. <laughs> he's going. I don't know if he's going to the to the NFL or a SEC team is going to get him. Right. I don't know, but he's not going to stay. And if you think he's going to stay, you're crazy. He's not going to – nobody – I mean, a, a little bit – so I had the opportunity to be a grad assistant. Don't don't jump me on this. I had the ability to be a grad assistant basketball coach at Florida State, right? Oh, okay. Because um, I'm real – I'm close with the uh, head coach, right? Oh, Hamilton? Uh, yeah, Hamilton. Because he recruited me out of high school. And then he went to Florida State, you know, all that fun stuff. But that's you know. Um, so I did it for one day, right? Uh -huh. I had to call a recruit, and he was asking me for money, and I'm like, I can't do this, coach. I can't. I can't. Right, right. I right, cannot right. do this. And now put that times a million. Oh yeah. No, I, I just don't see a grown. People understand. These these coaches are in their 50s, 60s, 70s. They're first they have to beg and plead with these teenagers to have boogers coming right. out of their nose. Right. And now they're, they're you don't have to kiss their ass. Now you gotta pay them. <laughs> yeah. Right. So it's like exactly. are, are you serious? Exactly. You know, it um sorry to go long but, winded. No, 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 no. It's it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I just you know, the more we delve into this. And all we're doing is looking at stuff from, you know, 04 to, to, to 08 right now. I mean, the more you delve into it, the more you start formulating these theories, you know, and that, you know, imagine. Okay. <laughs> let, let's let, real quickly, let's play the interchange game. What if you had the 09 quarterback room here for 2024? Hell no. Hell no. Because if Jacory gets hurt, you're in deep boo boo. Yes. What if it was Jacory that broke his arm against Florida State? Right. You know. And, and again, I'm just I'm just saying that. I, I don't know. It's all I can say is they're better. I mean, whether Mario stays or he goes, I just they they they, they better be successful. And again, I I want Mario just so. For the recording, I want this program to win. I want Mario to stay here for 80 years. Right. I want this program to win at the end of the day. That's my whole thing. I want to be called the clown, you Mario hater. Now don't jump on the bandwagon. I want to be clown. I, I yeah, I want Miami to be good again, fellas. <laughs> That's I want thing. I just want it to be like it used to be where they didn't rebuild, they reloaded. In other words, People like they, you know, the guys said back in the day, they were afraid to to, to leave a play because they were tired or hurt because the guy that played second string could have took their job. They didn't want to lose their job, yeah, you know. Exactly. And it's like it was just a revolving door of talent, no matter where, when, or how, you know. Oh, uh, now again, this is a whole different age that we live in, a whole different era. Uh, Katie. Good point. She says it thinks it's the parents trying to make bags off their kids. I would not doubt that a bit. 
Uh, they should they, uh, they get but, their, I mean just get your money these coaches are getting their money as well it's, it's right. this is uh, I'm not trying yeah. to get political here but this is not a communist country this is a capitalist society yeah. like, you know if, if somebody's gonna if somebody's gonna offer you that money take it they're yeah. the NFL the NBA um MLB is not guaranteed um I no. I knew in my school um um, he, he was a baseball player. He was drafted number three overall. He got a big, you know, contract. But guess what? He never made it to the league. But he got right. his millions of dollars. Right? It's like that's right. That's right. Get it while you can, because it's you could be the the best player in the nation. You might never ever make it to the NBA, NFL. Look at LeBron James, kid. He's not going to make hmm. it to the NBA, right? Or you yeah. know, it, it's it's tough. So get your money while you can. Exactly. But. Well, all right. Well, look, this has been a wonderful show. This, this, it's just getting better and better as we go. But, uh, and it also gets more frustrated as we go, right? Know? And it is what it is. It's going to be what it's going to be. But, I'm still uh, the reason why I could stay so long because I'm working. So, oh no, it's fine. I'm still, I, mean, I'm still, I'm just, I am still working. That's ridiculous. It's fine. It's fine. But, uh. Cuban, thank you for stopping by and being the on-screen guest tonight. Kind of disappointed in what's his name, but that's and Jordan okay. did not pay me for this. You <laughs> be mother. Uh, yeah, nobody's me. nobody's paying me either, so we're in the same boat, dude. No, there is a clown. <laughs> I'm not gonna. I'm, oh it, my gosh! Yeah, there'll but, be a show where if yeah, well, whatever. <laughs> that fucking clown. Oh my gosh. But uh, thanks to everybody who showed up. Crip, it's good seeing you. I'm glad you see you doing better. QB, as always, always nice having you here. Uh, Workforce, good to hear from you again. I hope you're doing well. Glad you made it. And, of course, the one and only, the lovely and talented Miss Katie Allman. Thank you for stopping by tonight. Uh, Now, before I forget, Katie, I don't know if you're still here or not. But what I was talking about, this the check it out corner, the check it out corner. Uh, whoops. Right there. Up there in the corner. That's the check it out corner. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm hilarious. Anyway, nah, but but nah, seriously though, thanks to everybody for stopping by. Uh, thanks to QB. I think QB actually made it the whole time we were here too. So, uh, so yeah, that's it. That, that's a wrap. Uh, 2009. Hell if I know when it's going to be, I'm going to, uh, it's either going to probably be Friday or Saturday. I'm not sure yet. Oh, uh, oh, wait a minute. Hold up. Next weekend is the Australian Grand Prix. Which means if we do it, if we do it Friday night, I have to be done by midnight my time, one o'clock your time on the you East Coast. You skip a week. Oh no, I have, there's there's no race this week. No, I'm uh, talking for this show. You can skip a week. Well, I kind of I kind of like to keep it trend go. I like to keep the trend going. You know, I mean it's. It's kind of got me in a routine. It's kind of taken my mind off of life. Well, not so much life, but it just kind of all this nonsense. It kind of gives me some purpose and direction during the off season, if that makes any sense. But what I'm getting at, and I actually, truthfully, I actually enjoy it. I really enjoy revisiting and remembering as much as it pisses me off. You're sick. I still enjoy it. I still enjoy it. And You're plus sick. it's an, it's an excuse to fellowship with y'all for a little bit longer. Oh, so let's see, Friday, oh, well, actually, it's midnight Friday is the qualifying, my time, and then Saturday night at 11 o'clock, my time, midnight, East Coast, that's when the race is on, so, who we'll figure it out, because I figure if I'm, a, if I, like, if I start this show at, like, 7 o'clock, you know, it's already... You know, it's eleven fifteen my time, twelve fifteen your time. So I mean, it wouldn't be like, but a little bit. I don't know. Oh, uh, 
Let's see. I mean, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Or I could do it Thursday night. I could do it Thursday night. I don't know. We'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. But anyway, that's a no, never mind. But so, yeah, thank y'all so much for stopping by. As always, Cuban, I appreciate the conversation. Um, because you know we're we're not like other other channels, you know we we're gonna throw whatever out there. Who cares? Um, uh, so yeah, just stay alert, stay tuned. Um, uh, and that's really all I got. So y'all remember, peace, love, and soul. Remember, I said that first before she had peace, love, and soul. All about the you go canes. Thank y'all. And we're going to catch y'all next time. Bye. Peace.